production is available on ABC HD presented by Dish Network. Glorious day in Atlanta, picture perfect. Speaking of picture perfect, I think at least she's back in healthy. Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? I missed you guys the last couple of weeks. Sitting home on Saturdays is for the birds. Talk to Georgia Tech. They will tell you how important it is to run the ball well today. Maybe easier said than done, though, because for the first time in Miami school history, the Canes have held each of their first seven opponents under 100 yards. Duke nearly did it last week. Louisville, six-ranked team in week three. But Patrick Nix, Tech's coordinator, says he doesn't think anybody has committed to the run the way the Jackets will today. Talk to Tashard Choice, Georgia Tech's running back, and he's putting this game on his shoulders. He says, I need 130 yards and two touchdowns to propel my team to victory. Added Nix, this game ain't about style points. If they try to double Calvin Johnson every play, that's fine. We'll run it 100 times a game as long as we win. We'll see if they can do that. Miami won the toss. Larry Coker in his sixth season, 58 and 11. Chan Gailey in his fifth year, 33 and 24. Georgia Tech will receive. Brian Moreau's kick goes deep, and Jamal Evans has it go off his fingertips and out of the back of the end zone. So Georgia Tech will work from its own 20 yard line. Reggie Ball comes out, the senior. He started every game when he isn't injured, and right now, his head coach says he's not at the top of his game physically either. He's all right. He's not 100%, but very few players in the eighth game of the season are 100%. Um, but one thing about him, he's a, the ultimate competitor. You couldn't, unless there's blood and bones, you, you couldn't get him out of the game. Reggie doesn't talk much about being wounded. He's got a bad leg, but he's back to throw on first down and now trying to scramble out of trouble. Ball's loose, fumble picked up by Miami. They're going to score. Touchdown, Glenn Cook. First play of the ball game, and the Canes defense puts their team in front. Reggie Ball got banged up last week against Clemson, and it looks like he's hurt on the first play of the ball game. How prophetic was his coach talking about him? Unless there's blood and bone hanging out, there almost is after this play. Reggie drops back to throw. Calais Campbell is going to be the guy to hit him from behind. You see his leg gets twisted in a weird fashion, and Glenn Cook scoops it and scores. Miami with an extra point coming up. That is not the way you start homecoming. Miami a man short on their extra point team. John Petty in for the kick. Stunned silence at Bobby Dodd Stadium. It's 7-0 Canes on one play. Here's another look. He actually had a man open, Calvin Johnson. Knocked, gets the ball knocked out, didn't put the football away. The first non-offensive touchdown for the Hurricanes this year. Watching ESPN on ABC. It's amazing they're trying to get the crowd revamped. They had the opening kickoff, Georgia Tech, and in one play, Reggie Ball fumbled. Miami scored 7-0 in the opening 26 seconds of the ball game. Monroe's kick this time. Evans will field a yard deep. Jamal Evans, a freshman tailback. Whoa, did he take a shot right at the 20-yard line? James Bryant said hello. A 22-yard kick return. Let's take a look at our IBM Star Watch. For Georgia Tech, you can't talk about Star Watch without Calvin Johnson. It starts and ends almost right there. Eight touchdowns already. He was shut out against Clemson for the first time in his career last week. They only threw four balls his direction. Bonnie touched on Tashard Choice. He said he needs a 100-yard game for Georgia Tech to win. He started the game last year, 29 carries, 84 yards against Miami. Here's his first carry of the day, and it's a pretty good one. Out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Glenn Cook, the guy that had the fumble recovery, made the tackle right there. Our city starting lineups for Georgia Tech. Up front, probably their best offensive lineman is their left tackle, Andrew Gardner. And a guy that doesn't get a lot of publicity, but Tashard Choice told me the other day, without number 40 in front of me, I wouldn't be having the season I have had. And that's Mike Cox, the fullback. Second down and five. Choice again. Got out near the 30, where it's going to bring up third down at about two. And a flag at the end of the play. Tom Zamorski is our referee. Georgia Tech saying it's on Miami. And it is. Face mask. 
That's going to give Georgia Tech a first down. Defensively, let's take a look at the group for the Miami Hurricanes. As always, very athletic and talented. Calais Campbell's a guy they will try to keep off Reggie Ball, but he already caused a fumble today. Daryl Sharpton starts at middle linebacker. John Beeson is back. He's going to play a lot. He's been banged up. He's their leader, and we'll see a lot of him today. There's Calais Campbell. This defense for Miami is ranked 10th in the nation in scoring defense and 8th in overall defense and very tough to run against. They're like third in the nation against the run. Only 63 yards a game, but Tashar Choice is trying to change that. And Choice goes out for almost 10 more. It'll be just short of a first down. So number 22 has been talking all week about how he wanted to Look play, and he's doing a great job, Paul. Brad, number 40, Cox, the man you talked about, he just comes down the line and watch this block that he makes right at the hole. And when he makes that block, he cuts back and Choice cuts back to the inside, and then they pick up nine yards on this play. That's unbelievable watching this guy. Choice again on a cutback. First down, plants his foot as he got down to the 43-yard line. So I got to give Georgia Tech credit. They haven't tried to pass since the opening play of the ball game, Bob. And out to Shard Choice has kind of calmed the crowd. Looks like he's calmed the Tech huddle a little bit, too. Well, the thing you have to remember, if that happens to you, a fumble and they take it the other way, is, hey, this is a long football game. So we gave him seven points. So what? We're going to outscore him by more than seven points the rest of the game. Calvin Johnson will trot out to the top of your screen. And James Johnson, the other wide receiver, to the left. Play action to Choice. Reggie Ball on the bootleg. And he's going to throw it away. He did everything he could and then threw it out of bounds. Deshard Choice has had a good start. He talked with me the other day about wanting this very thing to happen on the opening drive. Run the ball, eye formation. I love running out the eye. We, you know, we're doing some different things. Just we try to run right at them because they're so fast. So, you know, a lot of things gonna be put in the hands of the playmakers on offense to make plays, go out there and get, you know, go out there and make plays, convert on third down. And let's see if they can convert on second down. He's already converted a couple of third downs. He is in the eye formation. There's Calvin Johnson that Bob circled for you out to the right side. And choice this time has no choice. Calais Campbell off the edge again. 6'8", 265 pounds sophomore. And he is probably uh, the, the next rising star in that, all, in that defensive line for the Hurricanes. As you mentioned, he is tall and lanky. When he fills out that frame, he's going to be tough to handle. Now Georgia Tech finds itself in a long yardage situation on third down. 38% on the year. Last year against Miami, they were 5 out of 17 on third down conversions. That's Calvin Johnson, and he's in motion. Trying to find him a spot. Reggie Ball will be looking for him, no doubt. Reggie loads and goes low. He's got a man down the sideline. And Kenny Phillips, did he get it? It's broken up. James Johnson was out there. And Kenny Phillips, with that closing speed, came up to break it up and almost intercepted. Brad, Brad the one thing that happens here, watch what Kenny does. Kenny Phillips, he waits on the ball. Instead of going up and taking the ball at the high point, he waited. And when he did, James Johnson takes the ball out of his arms. If he goes up and takes the ball away, he's got the interception. Good call, Paul. Phillips had three interceptions last week, and he's had four in his last two ball games. I'm sure he thought he had one there. Durant Brooks in the punt, or Rashawn Jones is back there looking into the sunshine. Brooks hit it a mile. Might be too far, though. Bounces at the two and into the end zone. So Miami will have a touchdown lead, and their offense hasn't even taken the field. Kyle Wright says, I want to play. He'll get a chance when we come back. You're watching ESPN on ABC. If you don't get what you want, you scream and shout. I'm not the only one who said it. If you don't get it, you gotta let it out. Yeah. If you don't get what you need, you're picking on me. I'm tired of getting Everything's getting faster, sexier, more powerful, and yet less expensive. So why not cars? Say hello to the G6 sedan. G6 coupe. 
and G6 hardtop convertible. G6, one of the fastest growing brands in America. Pontiac, designed for action. You are killing me, Birkwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. Never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret ham. Take it. Not bad, Birkwood. You ever taken this trail, Birkwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Are you in good hands? ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Pontiac. Go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. Allstate. Are you in good hands? And the Home Depot's Improvement Week, November 2nd through the 8th. Georgia Aquarium, our beluga whales. We've got also our whale sharks here in Atlanta. If you've never visited the aquarium, do that when you get a chance. Javaris James got maybe a yard. There's our whale sharks. That's that's Ralphie on the left. And that's Norton over there on the right. And uh, Trixie and Alice, they really haven't taken to the guys yet. But Georgia Aquarium, one of the biggest, not only in the country, but in the world, right down the street here from Georgia Tech. I, I went I went swimming with them yesterday, and I, when they, I went face to face with them, scared the hell out of them. I, th I think it scared the hell out of them. <laughs> Talking about some sharks wanting to escape. Here's Javaris James, cut back run. Across the 30, great speed down the sideline. He's to midfield. One man to beat. Georgia Tech will track him down, but not before he gets all the way to the 30-yard line. That's Kenny Scott coming all the way across the field to knock him out of bounds. With that run, he passes Edger and James, his older cousin, in the freshman annals in the ground game for Miami. He's going to bounce it back to the left side. Good vision, and the, the defensive back on that side, Roberson, slips down. He's going to outrun uh, DJ, DJ Jones. Jones, and it's Scott from the other side of the field that makes the play. So two big plays in the ball game, one by the defense, and now the Miami offense, and it's first down at the Georgia Tech 30. Kyle Wright, a quick out, delivered high, and a great catch to get one foot down at the 23-yard line by Lance Leggett. Lance Leggett is the best and most productive receiver for the Hurricanes this year and Kenny Scott number two the defensive back has been following him the cornerback he's going to go one side or the other and I saw the first play Kenny Scott pointed at Leggett and Leggett pointed right at him when they're lined up outside <laughs> says I got you and I got you boy yeah well that's sunny and share but so far Miami's got the best of it James on the inside and he goes for a first down down to the 18-yard line. We barely, they barely had time to give you our RBM star watch. Lance Leggett, well, he just fit into the picture, didn't he, with that catch on the sideline. And defensively, we've seen Kenny Phillips break up what would have been a Georgia Tech touchdown for the Canes on defense. And now Miami's got it at the Georgia Tech 18-yard line, first and 10 with a 7-0 lead. And we're not even five minutes into the game. There's Kenny Scott. And Leggett will go to meet him. James in the eye. Georgia Tech looking to blitz. Here they come. Kyle Wright. Down he goes. Well, that's Georgia Tech's defense for you. Well, it's also a, it's also a freshman James slipping down in the backfield. This is a 20th straight start for Kyle Wright. And Bob, I think you mentioned it in the open. While he's a good player, he's not quite developing at the rapid pace they were hoping he's for. He's been there four years. He is a redshirt junior. He's making his 20th start, and he still is not making plays. He just there's, there's something there that hasn't come out yet in Kyle Wright. Second down and long after the Georgia Tech sack, their first of the ball game, their 18th of the year. And it's second down and 14. Wright. Quick drop and the quick throw out to the tight end who stood up. Chris Zellner stood up over there by Roberson with the tackle. Starting lineup, our city starting lineup for Miami. Jason Fox is a starter as a freshman on the offensive front. 
And Javaris James and Sam Shields starters at the skill positions. Usually yeah. don't see three young guys in there. Well, they, there's three true freshmen that are starting for the Miami Hurricanes, and they've started like five or six ball games. Fox has started all year. Third down and long. Georgia Tech will pin its ears back here. Kyle Wright will be in the shotgun with four wide receivers. Huge third down early in the ball game. Wright throws, broken up, incomplete. Jaheor Daniels is the guy that broke it up. And now the field goal unit will come on for Larry Coker, I would assume. One of the things that, that Kyle Wright does is he looks exactly where he's throwing the ball. He never looked anywhere else. John Patty will come in. And he'll try a 38-yard field goal. He's five out of nine on the year. From 38 on the way, and good. Miami with 8.36 remaining in the first quarter. And now it's 10-0 Miami. Go, go, Calvin Johnson's go. hoping things get better when we come back. Coming up, Reggie tries to get me the ball in the end zone. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Kind of different down here, guys. It, it, these are for eyeshadow, you know, for the, the sun. I have them elsewhere. You'll see them later on. But the, you know, the funny thing about being down here and above the players and when right on the sidelines, I'm 10 yards from the playing field, is that it's not as fast a game. It may sound funny. It's not as fast a game down here as it is up there where you're watching. And, and the reason it's faster for Greasy is because of the glasses that he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> like you just took yours off yeah. before you came on camera. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Brian Monroe to kick off again for the third time in the ball game. Jamal Evans waiting on it. Two yards deep. Evans across the 20. Out to the 25. Nice return of about 27 yards. Next week, Saturday Night Football on ABC returns. Most of you will see a big ACC showdown between Miami and Virginia Tech. Others will see uh, Marshawn Lynch and number 12 Cal against Pac-10 rival UCLA. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Calvin Johnson without a catch so far today as Georgia Tech mostly had Tashard Choice carrying the mail. And they're going to give it to him again, but he is stuffed and loses a yard almost too. Calvin Johnson last week against Clemson. For the first time in his career, an 0 for night. They threw deep to him, interference, the first series of the ball game, then overthrew him badly, Reggie did, then threw one that might have been behind him a little bit, but catchable, and then one low and away, and first time without a reception in his career. A lot of double coverage last week. Today against the Hurricanes, it's been all single coverage, mostly Merriweather. Now it's Reggie Ball looking for him. And way over the head of everybody on the far side. Let's check in and get an update in New York. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. Hi, Brad. Taco Bell update from Columbus for the countdown to the Michigan game is roughly 500 hours or so. Wolverines took care of business earlier today, and so far, so good for the Buckeyes. Antonio Pittman with his ninth rushing touchdown of the season, and Ohio State leads it 10-0 on Minnesota. Florida and Georgia and Jacksonville. Gators get the jump. It's 7-0 there. All right, Matt, thanks. Keep us posted. Third down coming up. Reggie Ball is 0 for 3 today. Again, they move Johnson in motion over to the slot on the right side. And Reggie Ball looking to pass, looking for some help. And he throws back across his body to James Johnson, and he's got a first down. His forward progress is to the 36-yard line, and a third and 11. He found the other Johnson for 12. Big first down there just to keep the drive going, not kick it away. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, Brad watching Reggie Ball on the sidelines. He hasn't been getting any treatment. Seems like he's okay. Coordinator Patrick Nix told us when he got hurt early in the Clemson loss last week, it really felt like it affected Reggie's confidence. Now, he's, he's tough as nails. He didn't miss a single rep in practice. Ideally, they don't want to run him as much as they usually do, but Nick said if we need Reggie's legs to win, we're going to do it. He's had some big games on the ground this year. Tashard Choice goes down for a loss of one. Reggie had 130 yards rushing in the Samford game earlier this year. It was a Georgia Tech quarterback record for yardage on the ground. Brad, let me, and Bob, let me tell you something. If they take 
Calvin Johnson and split him out just to whatever side. I don't care. And they roll that way. And if they throw a screen back to the other side of the field, they're going to they're going to score a lot of yardage or a touchdown because everybody's going after Calvin in that side. Johnson down to the near side this time. Reggie Ball flushed out of the pocket. You're not going to outrun Miami very often. Now he tries to throw at the very last. And it goes off the back of his hand, and they're going to call it a attempted pass, I believe. Reggie's trying to talk Tom Zamorski into it, but he's standing where Reggie went out of bounds. So let's see what the final word's going to be. I think they're going to bring it back to the line of scrimmage, so it's an incomplete pass at the very last second, trying to save a couple yards. I think Red Reggie running out of bounds throws it. Bobby Dodd Stadium in Grant Field, one of the biggest games here in the flats in a long time. It's for... The Coastal Division lead in the ACC and the inside track to Jacksonville. How ironic that Georgia Tech's playing a big game trying to get to Jacksonville and Georgia's playing a big game in Jacksonville trying to get to Atlanta. <laughs> kind of weird. Reggie Ball to throw. This time he's got it. Calvin Johnson down the sideline. Johnson with a stiff arm. Out of bounds, but not before he got to the 21-yard line. And there's number 21. 43 yards on third and long. Let me, let me tell you about this. He just takes this ball away. Calvin Johnson, there's no way he should have caught this ball. Watch his hands. Watch his hands. He just snatches the ball right now. And when he takes this ball against away from Sharp, Sharp cannot believe that he took it. Man, was that beautiful. I'm sitting there watching. I said, there's no way he can catch this ball. Well, that's, could, that's the single coverage, Paul, that they're playing. Miami has doubled him one time in about uh, 10, 12 offensive plays. So no shutouts today for Calvin. First down, Georgia Tech at the Miami 22, and here's number 22 to Shard Choice. Nice stop right in the hole, but he got a couple yards. And it'll bring up second down and eight. Kenny Phillips from the secondary comes up to make the hit on to Shard Choice. I'll tell you guys one thing. I showed a lot of patience, and I'll tell you why. I was so close. I was going to jump down there and intercept that ball, but I thought the better of it. He just stiff-armed you, too. Kind of yeah. had, had moves like you used to have, huh, Paul? Uh, yeah, a lot of that same look. Yeah, nobody, nobody's got it black and white. Second down at the 20. Second and eight. Choice left side to short choice. Is inside the 10. First and goal, Georgia Tech. Tavares good may have saved the touchdown. Watch the fullback, number 40, right here. Follow Cox, and you're going to follow the ball. They go up to the right side of the quarterback, and everybody cuts back to the left. That's kind of a little misdirection to get the linebackers flowing one way and then run the ball the other way. First and goal, Georgia Tech. James Johnson wide to the right. Calvin Johnson in the slot that way. Reggie Ball throws. Mike Cox dropped it at the four-yard line. It was low and behind him. Cox is a very dependable receiver. Brad, you know why they don't throw it to him enough? <laughs> I'm right here. I, I, I swear I'm 10 yards away. He fought that ball from the time that ball, the ball threw it to him. He could see it coming. His, his, his hand, his, his, actually, his hands went upside down, and he, and he was going to run in for a touchdown before he got the ball. That was a shame. I felt so bad for him. Catch the ball. <laughs> Tenth play of the Georgia Tech drive. Second and goal at the nine-yard line. Reggie Ball in the gun. Rolling to his right. Look out. Down he goes way back near the 20-yard line. Baraka Atkins came out of nowhere. And it's hard for Baraka to hide. He's 6'4", about 280. A 10-yard sack. Baraka Atkins has seen a lot in his career at the University of Miami. He's a four-year starter starting close to 30, 39 regular season games. So now it's third down and goal, but it's way back at the 19-yard line. Not only that, Georgia Tech's place kicker has not been very consistent this year. And they want to get some of this yardage back at least. Tashard Choice lost more yardage, and now the Boo Birds are out for homecoming. Well, they just don't like running the ball when you got it. We got that far to go, but but Greece, you know, there aren't many plays that are third and 20. Well, Georgia Tech is ranking in the nation in passing is 95th in the nation in passing the, the ball. So I think I think they want to get on the board here if they can. If like Brad said, he hasn't been very consistent of late. 
Only four out of nine, Travis Bell. This one from 39 yards away. The kick on the way, and it's good. So Georgia Tech got something out of it. They have preferred a touchdown, but it's 10-3. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter, 10-3 Miami. Kyle Wright, the quarterback. Bob talked about it, that it's a tough position, especially when you're playing quarterback at the U. There's a lot of expectation to live up to, um, but I think that's at every position at Miami, and that's why, to me, you know, why I came to Miami and why everybody else on the team came to Miami is, you know, it was to uphold the tradition and, um, and to really be a part of something special. Mention the names Ken Dorsey, Jim Kelly, Vinny Testaverde, Gino Toretta, Kozar, mm -hmm. Walsh, Erickson. Some pretty good ones. And a lot of championships mixed in among them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's got it teed up for Georgia Tech. Bruce Johnson and Rashawn Jones are back deep for the Canes. High short kick. Fair catch called for and taken at about the 23-yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, Brad, Kyle Wright is without his most reliable senior Ryan, or receiver. rather. Ryan Moore's been suspended since the end of August after an on-campus altercation with a woman. He came back to practice this week, but the formal charges were not filed until Thursday, this past Thursday. And so Athletic Director Paul D. told me it was the university's decision to keep Ryan out of games until his legal issues are resolved. Now, the actual arraignment has to be done by November 16th. At that time, it's already been pre and he is going to enter a pre-trial diversion program. I'll tell you a little bit more about that after this play, Brad. Okay. First down at the 24-yard line for Kyle Wright. And comes to Javaris James on a little swing pass, and James gets a pretty good gain and gets tagged out of bounds at the 33. Bonnie can finish up the story. All right, so the pre-trial diversion program means that Ryan has to go through restitution and he has to go through community service and an anger management program. Now, as to when he's going to come back, well, that depends on who you talk to. I talked to Larry Coker right before the game. He expects more to be playing by next Saturday, but athletic director Paul D said until Ryan stands in front of a judge, gets his sentencing, and starts that pre-trial diversion program, he will not play. Well, that's a two-week difference between athletic director and head coach there. Here's Jamaris James taking it wide, no gain. And it's going to bring up a third down and short for the Georgia Tech defense. And Georgia Tech, as you take a look at the city lineups defensively, the guy that makes all the calls, had a huge game last year with a couple of sacks and was player of the week in the ACC, K. Michael Hall. They call him K. He's the guy that's their leading tackler. Kenny Scott, we've seen him be active already because he's following Lance Leggett all over the field. And you can't uh, talk about Georgia Tech defensively without mentioning John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator who likes to, to blitz. 80% of the time, he says he'll send five guys. They sent everybody into the pack this time. And James, I don't know. No, I don't think he got it. I don't think he did either. I'm right here, boys. I'm right here. You're right on they, it, Paul. They did. He, he's, a, he's a good half yard short. All right. We'll trust you, but we'll check with Matt Weiner in New York first before we get the measurement. Right on the ball, no matter where it is. Yeah, it's kind of neat, though, Bob. You know, the problem is they won't let me get in the middle of the end zone. That's the only problem. Right. I think it's nice that Paul is paying ABC to have that seat. <laughs> There's John Tunuta, the defensive coordinator, happy with no gains on three straight plays by the Miami offense after giving up nine on first down. So it forces a Brian Monroe punt. Tyler Evans, true freshman, a little guy out of Ackworth, Georgia, is waiting on it on the other end. Blocked it. Evans says everybody out of the way. It's going to take a big time Miami roll. Inside the 10, still going all the way down near the seven yard line. So Georgia Tech starts in a hole, trailing 10 3. Two rival coaches lead their teams on the field on ESPN tonight. 
Phil Fulmer and the Tennessee Volunteers take on the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Both teams trying to chase down Florida in the SEC East. College football primetime on ESPN, 7.45 Eastern tonight. Mike and Todd will have the call. All the college football games on ESPN and ESPN2 are available in high definition. It is homecoming at Georgia Tech, and boy, what a glorious day after a real stinker yesterday. I don't know how much it rained, but this field has taken it beautifully because of the drainage system they put in here at Georgia Tech. And it's a picture-perfect fall day. Deshard Choice, and he didn't get much, maybe a yard. Let's get the game breakdown from these two college good-looking kids here. <laughs> Circle the wagons for Miami, and they needed to start off good, and they did and keep the ball rolling. Reggie Ball must play and must play well for these guys to win. Well, and Miami is to shut down a run, except for one run by choice, and that was the only really run that meant anything. And then for Georgia Tech, just do not allow Miami to get deep. They haven't gotten deep throwing the ball, but they did have one long run. Bob, was that picture taken in front of your fraternity house? <laughs> I think it was. Choice again met in the hole. I want to know why. I want to know why they go and get Paul and my picture from college. I mean, well, why, why do they do that? Because you guys were, were stars in your own right at Old Purdue, Old Purdue and the Citadel. Hey, yeah. Bob, Bob, because we looked a whole lot better yeah. then than we do now. Yeah. Well, Paul yeah. had a little more hair. Yeah. And I'm going to send Bob some. Bob doesn't look much different. I'm going to send some people out to find with my broadcast partner up here. We'll come back <laughs> maybe some later on. <laughs> Hey, we got something down in the bushes. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> you know what I, don't, I don't understand. They're, they're playing man-to-man uh, -man on Calvin Jones, except for third down now. They're going to rotate some people. Calvin Johnson, I'm sorry. They're playing man-to-man. -man. I don't understand on first and second down why they didn't throw the ball to him. They still aren't throwing. Choice trying to break through. He might have a first down, though. Looks like he does. Georgia Tech is one of those teams that will not give up on the run unless it's late in the game and there's no other choice but to throw. They average 170 yards on the ground a game, which is in the top 30 in the country. And they're second in the conference in rushing and 10th in the conference in passing. So even though they have Calvin Johnson, the best wide receiver in the nation, they still want to run the football. Now let's see if they'll use a first down to put it in the air. The folks here are just a little bit restless. They want to see more of number 21. I don't blame them. I do too. Reggie called timeout with three seconds to go on the on the game or on the. Uh... We'll take a timeout too. A quick one here with six seconds remaining in the first quarter. Okay, smart guy. Tell me what the ACC Interinstitutional Academic Collaborative is. Well, that's simple. The IAC nurtures academic collaborations among all 12 ACC universities. Yeah. There's research being conducted abroad that tackles tough global issues now being shared across all ACC campuses. And these students will be better prepared for global careers. Hey, how do you know all this? The ACC, 12 universities with global goals. You know, they, they, I go back again to first and second down for Georgia Tech. They got Calvin Johnson. You see him right there. When he split out to his right, they're going man-to-man -man with Merriweather, number 19. And it's strictly man-to-man. -man, and they have not even tried to throw the ball to him. And if they threw something short, a little hitch or something, just to get him started. Georgia Tech, with six seconds remaining in the quarter, have a first down. And they're still buried inside their own 20, thanks to that punt by Monroe earlier. There's Calvin. Bob points him out. He's matched up with Randy Phillips right now on the corner. Ball to throw the other way. James Johnson, and that should be pass interference, but I don't see a flag. I guess not. Incomplete. Glenn Sharp is the guy that broke it up. Reggie Ball went the right direction. He's just going to run a post. Sharp is going to be the guy covering. It's single coverage. Oh, that's pass how interference. How is that not I'm pass sorry. interference? Well, you know, it, it, it was. He hit him early. But you guys got to see replay. That official down there, he doesn't get to see the replay. Well, let's show it to him. <laughs> Don't get replay involved on those two, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, well, we'll never a make a play. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten. Final play of the quarter, barring a penalty. And Deshard Choice just slipped on his own, it looks like, and lost yardage. 
So the quarter ends about the way it began for Georgia Tech. Slip up so far. End of one, Miami on the road leading 10-3. Start of the second quarter, Georgia Tech at home trailing 10-3 to Miami. And a third down and 11. Inside their own 20. Reggie Ball deep down the middle, overshot. James Johnson would have been a first down. We welcome you back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. It's so nice up here in the booth without them, isn't it? <laughs> a lot more room. <laughs> get a lot more room. It's quieter. If you haven't, uh, if you just joined us, Paul McGuire's down in the cart cam. 10-3, Miami got the big break early. Georgia Tech's defense stiffened, but uh, Georgia Tech's not getting it to Calvin Johnson right now. We, well, and he's there. He's available, but this is going to be a defensive game. All these points at the front of the game is is is, is an aberration because they are not going to score a lot of points in this ballgame. Remember, it was 14-10 was the final last year in Miami. And now Durant Brooks will have the punt inside his own five. Miami bringing the heat. Rashawn Jones has to backpedal. Great kick. All the way to the 31, but here he goes the other way. And he's out near midfield. 18-yard return on a 52-yard punt. Miami in great field position and back to basically full strength. Here's the players that were all suspended for the Duke game. And they're all back now. And there's some starters in there, now, too. About nine of the 12 were either starters or, or players that played a lot. On top of the suspensions, guys, the uh, the players also have to do uh, a bunch of community service. We'll talk about that right after this. First down at the 49. Kyle Wright with a five receiver group out there and in the shotgun. On a crossing pattern, he's got shields, the freshman, and he's down to the 35 yard line. Back to Bonnie. They've already started some of those community service efforts on Thursday. A bunch of the players served dinner at a Miami homeless shelter. And this is really a broad-based effort that's still kind of in development. They'll be picking a charity of their choice and helping promote it, working with inner school, high school kids to teach them about sportsmanship and the importance of behaving well in sport. Athletic director Paul D. just thought this would be a really good way to constantly reinforce the lessons they've had to learn from the FIU brawl. First down at the 36, a sack. Whoa, Kyle Wright almost had his shoulders taken off from his lower torso by Philip Wheeler, the middle linebacker. <laughs> Whoa. This is the first time that Georgia Tech and John Tenuta, the coordinator, have really got after the Miami offense. The previous play when they had five wide receivers, they spread the defense from sideline to sideline. Not easy to blitz in that situation, but that time, Wheeler right up the middle for a Miami loss. Last time they played, they hit right 13 times and sacked him seven. They've got him a couple times today, and that's Philip Wheeler's sixth sack of the year. Bootleg for right. He's got, got a lot of green in front of him, and he got a block and got out of bounds. And he had a man deep. Last year, they knocked Kyle Wright around pretty good to Georgia Tech as he was always looking for a place to try to throw the football. And what he usually found is one of the Georgia Tech defenders. You saw K. Michael Hall and Philip Wheeler, and there's Daryl Robertson. And those guys are all still playing for John Tenuta's defense. And they might be coming right here. That time, Third down at seven. outside the pocket, he had Zellner about five yards behind the defensive secondary, but just didn't see him. You read deep to short, downfield, and then short when you're outside the pocket. Cow right in the gun on third down. Down the middle. Diving attempt at the catch. Flag flies in as Leggett laid out for the football. Avery Roberson was covering. Pass interference on Georgia Tech. So that's going to give Miami a first down. And it will be down inside the 30-yard line. Kenny Scott is trying to plead his case, and he's number two. But this, this pass interference, it was, it, was, it was done well before the ball was thrown. 
You know, one thing I've seen about with Miami, especially in the first quarter with it, with Miami on defense, they're taking a, a, a page out of Tenuto's book. They are blitzing on third down against Georgia Tech. I don't think that they were expecting it. Now, first down Miami at the 22. James broke one tackle in the backfield. Tech trying to stretch it to the sideline, but he still gets a pretty good gain of about five before he's run out of bounds. Let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. As we saw coming in, these are the top two teams in the Coastal Division. The winner has the inside track on the Coastal Division Championship to get to the title game in Jacksonville. In fact, Georgia Tech, if they would win, they would have to lose two more conference games not to get to the title game. So you talk about having it in your hands. That's Boston right. College on the other side now in the Atlantic Division has the edge after Clemson's loss on Thursday night and BC's win. The flag here is we're probably going to have a holding call against Miami. Now these are the two most penalized teams in the conference. You know, Bob, sitting down here as close as I am to this play, you, you really see, you can see the holding. And what happens is K. Michael was, was blitzing, K. Michael Hall, and he's blitzing. And when he was blitzing, the, the, the lineman had a choice, either tackle him or Hold let it. him. Number 38 of the offense, 10 yards to the previous spot, repeat second down. Well, he had, he had two choices, either hold him or let him kill the runner. <laughs> In the pits this week, Joe Anawaii. Each week we uh, try to follow one defensive or offensive lineman, follow them throughout the ball game. Picked a pretty good one here. The Anawaii is one of the outstanding defensive linemen in the ACC. We'll check back with him throughout the ball game. If Georgia Tech doesn't blitz here, I'd be shocked. Second and 15. And here they come. Kyle Wright and down he goes. And it is Avery Roberson from the secondary this time. Boy, Roberson, you talk about timing a blitz perfectly. And we watched him at practice the other day do this, Bob. He just, Roberson just waited and waited and waited. And then when K. Michael Hall went to the outside, watch Roberson will come up in the inside. And when he does, there's just nobody there to block him. It's a delay. Here he comes. The back is only, has a choice to make. Well, does he, does he Paul, take they Paul, had Roberson? They had enough people. They had a tackle and a back. But they both went for the same guy and let Roberson go. Yes, sir. Now the crowd into it for the first time since the homecoming parade this morning. <laughs> Third and 22. Here they come. Right down the middle. Great catch. And down to the 20-yard line. Short of the first down, but back in field goal range. Lance Leggett with a catch. Nice pitch and catch. Nice throw by Kyle Wright. They blitzed. Everybody knew who to block. Kyle just sat in the pocket, threw the ball downfield, and as you mentioned, now they're back in field goal range. That's DJ Jones, the Jay Shoop is leading off the field, the junior safety. And now John Petty in to try a 42, uh, excuse me, a 36-yard field goal. The kick on the way, and he got it. So Miami tacks on three more on the road. Big game. They lead Georgia Tech now. 13-3. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by Best Buy on homecoming day for Georgia Tech. They trail Miami 13 to 3 with 11 minutes, 21 seconds remaining in the first half. If you missed the opening moments on the first offensive snap of the ball game for Georgia Tech, Calais Campbell caused a Reggie ball fumble and Glenn Cook took it in for the touchdown defensively. That's how Miami scored its touchdown. They've added two John Petty field goals, and now it's Monroe to kick off. Georgia Tech 10 points down at home. Jamal Evans from the seven. Evans with a head of steam, found a little crease, and Monroe, the kicker, made the tackle at about the 33-yard line. Tomorrow, join ABC as some of the PGA Tour's best fight for a spot in the top 30 on the money list and a berth in the season-ending Tour Championship, which is just down the street here in Atlanta. Live final round coverage, Chrysler Championship tomorrow, 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC. Bonnie, you have an update on DJ Jones? Yeah, Brad, it looks like he's got a shoulder injury. He's wearing a harness, and I asked the sports information folks at Georgia Tech if he had heard it in the game. They said he had not, so possibly something in practice, but that's not confirmed. But his return's questionable. He's had a nice year so far. 
three picks returned, one for a touchdown, has been one of Tech's more reliable guys in the defensive backfield. Yeah, they can ill afford to lose him. You saw Reggie Ball go deep down the middle to Calvin Johnson, who peered Bob to be open, and Reggie didn't get it to him. He didn't get it to him, and 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 Calvin Johnson got open. It was a late double coverage on Calvin Johnson, and instead of breaking to the outside, he broke to the inside, where, and 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 Reggie just didn't get him the ball. He's right in front of Paul on this play. Second down and ten. Toss to Rashawn Grants, who's checked in for Tashard Choice, and Grants out to about the 37-yard line. Here's Georgia Tech now in another third and long situation. You just can't do that throughout an entire ball game against a defense with the speed Miami has and expect to get away with it. Well, you know, it's a great point. Nobody wants third and longs, but especially against a, a darn good defense like Miami has. And, you know, this is not the best pass. Reggie's a good all-around quarterback. He's not the best drop-back passer. He's very inconsistent. 50% of his completions through his career. This is their shortest third down, and it's third and eights. Reggie sets and fires, and it's incomplete intended for Calvin Johnson, and Glenn Sharp got a hand in there to make the play defensively for Miami. So the Yellow Jackets will have to give it up and punt it away again. Reggie of, Ball is only 2 of 11. One of the things we have not seen Reggie do today is, is run. run. Yep. Take off and run. And that is one of the things that he's been doing a lot this year under new offensive coordinator Patrick Nix is running the quarterback more. But with the injuries to him the last couple of games, it's probably why we're not seeing it. Brooks to punt. Look out. Pressure coming. He got the kick away, and it's a good one again. Jones will take it, and ball loose. Scooped up back there by Miami, and it's Ryan Hill. And Hill's going to go down in a pile at about the 19-yard line. So that could have been a disastrous play for Miami. Instead, they maintain possession, and they maintain the lead with exactly 10 minutes left first half. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by... Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy, an American revolution. Best Buy, thousands of possibilities, get yours. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And one of Atlanta's most famous restaurants, been serving customers since 1928. And what do you have at the varsity? And you better know what you want, because if you don't give that guy an answer, they'll kick your butt out of there in a hurry. Kyle Wright comes up throwing incomplete. Kenny Scott intended for Lance Leggett. Georgia Tech has been blitzing on most plays. John Tanuta, their defensive coordinator, talked with us about his coaching philosophy. You got to be, you know, meet and defeat blocks, tackling. Those things are first and foremost. And now, when I get into the scheme aspect of it, I, I like to, to to play that chess game or however, you, whatever term you want to use of attacking the, the blocking schemes and attacking the protection to always put them on the defensive and not me always on the defensive. He is one of the best coordinators in college football. He told me that's the first interview you think he's done in Cameron in like eight and a half years. He's, not, he's not nuts about the media. A lot of fun to talk to. Kyle right to throw, completes it out to Sam Shields and he looks like he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Check our AFLAC trivia question this week. Who are the only two quarterbacks in NCAA Division I history to throw a touchdown on their first career pass? Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. You think that one over. That might take you a while. Wasn't greasy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no hints now. Third wasn't down greasy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> No, but, he, but Greasy knows the answer. <laughs> Third and a yard. Tyrone Moss in there for the first time, and he's going to be all wrapped up for a loss. Miami 0 for 2 on third downs. Third and ones, that is, today. Brad, let me let me just say something. When you talk, when you listen to Tenuto talking about his defense, the one thing watching the other day is when they they can disguise blitzes and where they're going better than anyone. And when they don't disguise it, it drives him crazy. Look at how they disguised all this. Now they put too many people. They don't have enough people to block the yellow shirts. Yeah, but remember what he said: playing off blocks and making contact in the hole. They did it there. High snap. The punts away. It's not a very good one. Tyler Evans. The lone return man for Georgia Tech. They're going to have the ball in Miami territory for the first time today via a change of possession at about the 
49. They actually might mark it at the 46 yard line. So far the Hurricanes on the road have showed their muscle. They lead 13 to 3. Watching ESPN on ABC. Grace just being down here close to ball, Reggie Ball throwing. He, he really looks like he is struggling throwing. Now, I don't know if he can't plant and his leg is bothering that bad. I mean, you mentioned it because he's not running because of the leg. I, I think it's affecting his throwing also. I, there is no question that he's playing hurt. That is for sure. And there's a whole, another term for eyes in the back of your head right there. <laughs> Paul's got him in both spots. Reggie back to throw. Going to go deep. Got James Johnson out there. He's got a little more bounce in his step now. I told you he's having a tough time throwing the ball. They got great field position on the short punt, and they went for the home run, and it went over the fence right here. Expose this ball about 60 yards, 65 yards. Is his feet in? Yep, I think it is. And they're going to review this. Yeah, they got to review it, but I think I think he caught it with his foot in bounds. So go down as a 46-yard touchdown if James Johnson's in. There's the ball. Yeah, no was doubt. This, Did he? Was he bobbling the ball? Is the only question. And you th couldn't see it. This might give us our best look. Catch the ball. The left foot down. was down. Yeah. The right foot goes out, but yeah. the left foot was down. That it looks, appeared. It looks good to me. Here it comes now. And if this, if, if well, this, yeah, he, you know what? He has control of this ball all the way. He made a clear catch with this. They're not going to overturn this. This is touchdown. It will be a 46 yard touchdown if it stays in the books. Tom Zamorski is over there talking to the guys upstairs. Bristol Martin is our replay official. Yeah, that ball, that ball, yeah, it's coming There's into his, his chest. Left. He's got the ball. Left foot down, ball in hand. The, the thing that's a little hard to see there is because of the shadow across that goal line on the south end of the stadium. And as you watch our replays, and they're showing it on the big screen here and the crowd reacting to it. <laughs> and here's the official call. After the view, video supports the call on the field. Touchdown. Reggie Ball, his... 12th touchdown pass of the year has made this with the extra point upcoming what should be a three-point game. Reggie leads the ACC in touchdown passes and that was just a great throw about 65 yards. <laughs> and the extra point is good. Not the most accurate of throwers but he got a strong arm. You know the third ha third happiest guy in this field is Calvin Johnson. ESPN on ABC. The other Johnson, sometimes forgotten James, a 46-yard touchdown catch. His third of the year, and it couldn't come at a better time or a bigger time for Georgia Tech. They fumbled on the opening snap, and then a punt, a field goal, a couple more punts, and finally a touchdown drive Yeah, of uh, one play. Got the uh, ball on the opponent's 46-yard line. That right there just does worlds of good for the quarterback and the offensive team. When you're not backed up in your own end zone, near your own end zone, but you're on the other side of the 50. And the ball blew off the tee, so Muhammad Yayawi will have to re-tee it. Bruce Johnson and Rashawn Jones are the guys back deep for Miami. Brad, when I said the third happiest guy was Calvin Johnson, I was watching him sitting right here on top of the scene looking down. He congratulated every single person on the <laughs> sideline. I mean, I'm not talking about just the offense. Everybody. No one was happier than he was. The combination of Johnson and Johnson have been the big plays for Reggie Ball today. He hasn't made many, but the ones he's made have been pretty big. Kenny Scott will hold it. Yowie and the uh, kick is going to be short. Fielded on the fly at the 11 by Jones. Runs into some of his own guys, and Georgia Tech finally drags him down at about the 30 yard line. Watch now. Here's Calvin right here on the outside. As he comes across the field, 
The other receiver, James Johnson, right here on the inside is going to go straight down the field. Now Calvin's on the outside. When he starts going across, watch as he attracts these two defenders, leaving James Johnson straight down the field, and he just overthrows it. Overthrows all the defenders to James Johnson in the end zone. Miami now, their lead cut to three, working from the 31-yard line. And Moss for the second time is dropped for a loss by the Georgia Tech defense. Avery Roberson, who has a sack to his credit, now has a tackle for loss back to the 26-yard line. You know, you just don't realize how quick this defense is until you're down here right next to him. And Avery Roberson, as soon as he saw a run, he was up into the backfield for the loss. I mean, you're looking at a safety coming up making a tackle for a five-yard loss on a run play. It's incredible. Second and long, and they'll keep it on the ground. Moss again. And he goes down under a gang of yellow jackets. A swarm, I should say, I guess, back at the 31-yard line. We asked you the Aflac trivia question earlier. The only two quarterbacks in NCAA Division I history to throw a touchdown pass on their first pass of their career. How about Matt Leiner to Mike Williams right there? And you know, sometimes you have to keep it in the family of lefty quarterbacks. Taylor <laughs> Bennett last year, Calvin Johnson against UConn when Reggie Ball didn't play, and Calvin took it to the house. First snap of their careers, touchdown passes. That's pretty good. Of course, Matt threw a lot of other ones. Taylor hasn't thrown a bunch yet. Georgia Tech, big blitz on right, deep middle. Olsen, the tight end's got it. And, Bob, they got something working in the deep middle now against the Georgia Tech blitz packet. Exactly. They saw the blitz coming. Kyle Wright didn't, didn't panic. Found his uh, favorite target, one of his favorite targets, Olsen. And hits him right down the middle. Watch him as he's going to come straight down the middle as the guy blitzes. Just throws it. All right. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pitch and catch, as you would say. Yep. And, Paul, that's the guy that you wanted them to get more involved in the offense against Virginia Tech when we saw him earlier. Yeah. Uh, against uh, Louisville, I beg your pardon. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he's the guy when he sees the blitz and Wright sees the blitz, he's the guy that he wants to look to. Javaris James back in the lineup. They fake it to him. Wright looking to throw. Down he goes again. Georgia Tech swarms around him. The ball comes out. But it was Kyle Wright who was already down. Wright is set. Let's get an update talking about USC. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. Brad, it's a bar. Verizon Wireless update. USC making its final regular season trip outside the state of California. It's been a rough one so far. Down 7 nothing, but Chauncey Washington bowls his way in from two yards out. Beavers have just tacked on a field goal. It's 10-7 in Corvallis. I think you had an upset alert on that one, didn't you, Grease, today? Yeah, I we did. We were talking about that one this morning. Yep. Second down and 21 for Miami. Following the sack. James had some open space momentarily. Philip Wheeler closed the door on him at about the 45-yard line. Under five minutes remaining in the half, and Miami with its full complement of timeouts. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John and Craig and Doug will have highlights and analysis from all this afternoon's big games, including that USC-Oregon State game that Matt just updated us. Georgia and Florida getting together in the world's largest outdoor family picnic. There you go. I'm sure everybody's drinking Diet Coke down there. Pretty sure. Third and 17. Blitz coming off the corner. And up the middle. And oh. down goes right again. Michael Johnson flew through there like Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's Michael Johnson's fourth sack. And I'll tell you what, nobody touched him. You know, they're just sending more people than they have to block. But watch when Michael Johnson, number nine, 93, look at him, goes up the middle. They really never blocked him. Young blood, number 77, Reggie, is a tackle on the outside. Should have moved down inside. Did not sack. Monroe's got to give it up now to punt. They've gotten close on a couple of occasions, putting pressure on the punter. And they almost got him again. Ball comes off the side of his foot. There are no flags. And again, Georgia Tech gets great field position following a 25-yard kick. They've been putting pressure on him all day. Troy Garside 
who blocked a punt earlier this year, and he almost got another one. In the ACC today, Virginia a winner over North Carolina State. Vandy beat Duke. Boston College routed Buffalo, so they lead the Atlantic Division. And Wake and Carolina tied at 14 in Chapel Hill. Reggie Ball, this pass. might be a double pass. This might be more than a double pass. Reggie Ball gets the throwback. Got a convoy in front of it. And out of bounds at the 47-yard <laughs> line. I don't know about this one. I want to see it again. I well, tell you, Brock Atkins did a nice job of staying at home. If the defensive end on that side for Miami hadn't have been there, Ball would have had a lot of running room. <laughs> that was definitely a lateral by Reggie. So second down and two after a crazy play and a pickup of eight. Ball back to throw. Oh! Down he goes hard. And it was Barack Atkins, who Bob talked about on the previous play, who comes up with a sack. Let's take you back to the previous play again. It was set up to be a double pass or a throwback. Reggie Ball gets it out there. It's definitely a backward pass. Yep. And now Calvin Johnson said, Reggie, I don't want it. You take it. And Reggie did a pretty good job because he had a full convoy of blockers in front of him. You know, I'm sitting right down here on the field. Brad and it looked like it really did look like Calvin said you know I really don't want this thing <laughs> I don't know if Reggie Ball wants it right here either third and 13 Reggie fires Johnson in and out of his hands and that's a rarity that was high but it was catchable and it would have been a first down let's check in with Bonnie you know Brad when you think about how Reggie Ball got hurt on the very first play of the game and how he has stayed in the game and focused it kind of makes you wonder if all the adversity he faced early in his career has helped him mature remember when he got here the expectations were so high everybody expected him to be the next Joe Hamilton the all-time passing leader and when he wasn't it was a tough time but he has learned to put all of that stuff behind him and just focus on the task at hand Trying to down this punt, and it's going to roll at about the 13-yard line. And that's where Miami, now Georgia Tech's trying to tell the official that it was touched by Miami. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Defensively on the first play of the ball game for Georgia Tech, Glenn Cook took that fumble of Reggie Balls in for a touchdown. And then James Johnson, the long ball from Reggie Ball for the score for Georgia Tech. And you wrap that around some field goals and this one big play that led to a field goal. Calvin Johnson with a 43-yard catch down the sideline. Didn't end up being a touchdown, but it did end up leading to a field goal. Brad, I got to tell you something. I love this cart can. We're going down the sideline. We almost ran over the homecoming queen. First down. Kyle Wright. Run out of bounds. Sam Shields. That's his third catch of the day. They really like this kid, a freshman out of Sarasota. Yeah, I like a lot of him. You know, he may be one of the best players, maybe the best receiver on the team right now as a true freshman. Darnell Jenkins out with a knee injury, kind of opened the door for Sam Shields, who played at Booker High School there in Sarasota. He's a sub 4 4 guy that started now the last six games. And he's really coming on. All right, watch out for the blitzes now. Either this one or this one or that guy. <laughs> I mean, you never know which which one. There's the top guys coming. Here's the throw. Leggett had slipped and he got up and made the catch in front of Kenny Scott. Boy, now that's some presence of mind. Lance Leggett made his cut. His feet went out from under him and he jumped back up and he was still a big enough target for Wright to hit him. And they're running everything from the line of scrimmage now. That's in their hurry up offense. Obviously, everybody knows the clock stops until a ball is set on a first down. Right in the shotgun with a first down out to 34. Quick throw, incomplete. Intended for Sam Shields. At the conclusion of our game today, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. 137 remaining in the half here in Atlanta. Big game between Miami and Georgia Tech for the lead in the Coastal Division and the inside track to the ACC Championship might lie ahead. But both these teams need a win. And we got a pretty good one going. 13-10, Canes in front. And here comes Georgia Tech's blitz. Kyle Wright takes his time trying to slow down that onslaught. Here they come anyway. Wright throws incomplete. 
And that one intended for Rashawn Jones. Monday night football should be a pretty good ball game too. Tom Brady and the AFC East leading New England Patriots head to Minnesota. They'll meet Chester Taylor and Brad Johnson and the Vikings. Watch out up there, Patriots. That's a tough place at the Metrodome. It's the Brady Bunch. That's the Brady Bunch. <laughs> 8.30 Eastern, available in high definition on ESPN HD and in Spanish on ESPN Deportes. There's Taylor Bennett, the guy we showed you, part of our trivia question. Georgia Tech's backup quarterback. This is the fifth time that Miami has had third down and 10 or more. And those, you just don't pick those up very, very readily. Miami's going to take a timeout with a minute 33 remaining in the first half. Here's a who am I for you. The last Georgia Tech player to be selected in the first round of the NFL draft. Now just in this century, Miami's had 22 first round picks. Yes. Georgia Tech hasn't had that many. But the one they had was a heck of a player. Keith Brooking, first round pick of the Atlanta Falcons with the 12th pick of the 98 draft. And he's now an all-pro right down the street at the Georgia Dome for the Falcons. That was the 98 draft, right? Yep. So that was what? Eight years ago? Yep. About. That was the last first-round pick they've had. Miami has had three or four every year, it right. seems like. I tell you what, though, if a guy down there wearing the old gold and white and navy wearing that number that that little kid's got on decides to come out next year, He'll not only be a first round pick, he might be the first pick. He may be the first pick of the first round. Well, we've got a little break here. Did you know? Bonnie was talking about it's been so long since somebody gained 100 yards against Miami on the ground. We saw it. Last year, LSU, Joseph Adai went for 130 and a touchdown in the Chick fil A Peach Bowl just down the street. Today, Georgia Tech only has 17 yards on the ground with look, the sacks involved. Look, look out over here. They got something brewing over here. Kyle Wright knows it. Here they come. K. Michael Hall off the corner. Passes in a second. Picked off and brought back to the 40 by Pat Clark. Georgia Tech's got the ball back with 125 left in the half. You put pressure on the quarterback, and it forces him to do things before he wants to do them. Bobby. Bob, he felt the back pressure of K. Michael Hall coming in. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see him come in. And then he steps up, and he never does see Clark. There's Hall. There's the throw. And then Clark's in the middle, Bob. And Pat Clark knows how to grab the football. Until this year, he was a wide receiver. And now he's back there in nickel coverage. And K. Michael Hall's pressure of the air and throw. Darrell Robertson was all over right, too. Reggie Ball now on first down. Deep down the middle. And oh! Intercepted by Glenn Cook. Georgia Tech almost gave it right back to Miami. He was trying to hit Calvin Johnson coming across the middle of the field. Didn't see Cook. I mean, you got to, you can't follow your receiver all the way. You've got to look at the defensive guys. You don't look at where your offensive guys are running. You know where they're going. You got to look at the fence post. You got to look at the <laughs> defense. You got to look at the linebackers and the DBs and throw around them. You got to look at the fence post. Yeah. Not the gate in the middle. Huh? That's right. Might be a blitz coming from Miami. And there is. Ball over throws Calvin Johnson. Flag flies in. There's going to be pass interference on Miami. Randy Phillips, number six. He grabs, again, they grab Calvin Johnson. I think more than anything last week with only four balls thrown in the direction of Calvin Johnson. In this case, that was the eighth that Reggie's aimed at him. I think the folks in Atlanta were more upset that they just don't throw it toward him, so this kind of thing happens, pass interference. Yeah. Pass interference, number six in the defense. 15 yards to the previous spot, automatic first down. Larry Coker is saying <laughs> it's an uncatchable ball. Yeah, Watch this, doing? here it is now when he comes off. See Phillips, he grabs him, he's holding him there. That's holding. And then now, <laughs> you know, when someone's saying it's uncatchable, yeah, it's uncatchable, the guy can't get to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> It's all good stuff. That it's is. all right. <laughs> but you know, if you've got an outstanding receiver, you can throw to him in double coverage if you've got a quarterback that can do it. The shot choice now trying to cut it outside and down to the 20 yard line. I don't think that Reggie Ball is, is accurate enough or sharp enough with his passing skills 
to hit a, a, a Calvin Johnson in the double coverage. Right. That takes some pinpoint accuracy, and uh, Reggie, as you said, on his career, about 51%. So about half the time it's good, and about half the time it's not so good. Timeout taken by Georgia Tech with 53 seconds left in the half. Georgia Tech trying to score here before halftime. Calvin Johnson, as I mentioned, would he be a number one pick? He might be the number one overall pick, and Chan Gailey says he's not going to argue. I've never seen a receiver as big and as fast with as good a hand-eye coordination as this guy. He really is an amazing athlete. The great thing about him, and I've said this a hundred times, and I hope I get to say it a hundred times more, he's a better person than he is a football player. And of course, Chan knows talent in the next level. As you take a look at Calvin Johnson's contribution to the offense and what he's meant to Georgia Tech in his three seasons, he's a true junior. And, uh, you know, Chan Gailey's been with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Miami Dolphins, Denver Broncos, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. When he's talking about this, the best he's ever seen, that's pretty good. Spent 14 years in the NFL. And, um, you know, he's a very respected guy. You know, I, I really like Chan a lot. I think he's doing a great job. At a, at, at a school and a program that obviously doesn't get as many of number one draft picks as the University of Miami does, but he's done a great job. Born in Gainesville, Georgia, went to America's High School, same high school as Dan Reeves. He, Dan Reeves, who used to be the Falcons head coach. Reggie Ball throwing out to Rashawn Grant, incomplete, and the coverage over there <laughs> defensively by Glenn Sharp. So now it's down to 49 seconds remaining, and Georgia Tech still has one timeout remaining. Obviously, they want to get three out of this, but with that interception by Pat Clark, they love to take a lead to the locker room, something they have not had at all so far today. Third down and six. How many times have I said third down and six yeah. all the way up to third and 13? And, and, and that's because of the strength of the defenses and the inaccuracies of the guys throwing the football. That was Yai Yawi who was warming up on the sideline. Travis Bell might not get a shot at a field goal. Ball running out of time and throws it away. Kareem Brown put the pressure on Reggie Ball. You know what's a really surprised me in this game sitting down there and looking at it because you can see it. You're so close to watching things open up. If Georgia Tech would throw one screen, just one screen, I'm telling you, it works for a touchdown. Tell us about the wind down there. Not too bad. This, you know, it, it really isn't too bad. I think now the wind is, is, is in his, it behind him. And he shouldn't have any problem with this. If he does, he's going to have to go home. Travis Bell hit one earlier. This is from 38 yards, and he's got another one, and we got a tie ball game. So Georgia Tech does take advantage of the turnover. They only get three, but they'll take that. For the first time since we were scoreless in the first opening seconds, we're tied again now at 13. Travis Bell from 39 and now 38. And that makes it 13-13. Big game again. It's in the Coastal Division. Georgia Tech and Miami. And the inside track maybe to the ACC championship would lie ahead. He plays in the ball game. Reggie Ball opening offensive snap for Georgia Tech. Calais Campbell causes a fumble. Glenn Cook takes it to the house for the touchdown. And then James Johnson, 46-yard touchdown strike from Reggie Ball. A perfect pass in the back of the end zone. The two biggest plays of the ball game. Kyle Wright, much like a year ago, Greece, has been banged around by that Georgia Tech defense. Well, you know, whenever you play a defense, that is smart, and, and you never know where they're coming from. The, the guy, he's playing against the defensive coordinator, John Tenuta, that's calling all these plays. And he's saying, all right, who's coming this time? And do we have them blocked? And are my men up front and my back good enough to see what I'm seeing to pick it up? So there's a doubt in his mind as to when he gets back to throw the football, whether or not I have enough time to really wait for my receivers. That guy right there wants to confuse the offensive lineman and the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, he's kicked, just kind of dribbles down, still finally touched at the 13-yard line. Jones now looking for some room, and he's got something working on this side. Rashawn Jones, nice return back to the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. Rashawn Jones on the return. He was forced out of bounds by number two. We talk a lot about John Tenuta and the guys that play for him probably know him best, like K. Michael Hall.
He's really intense, uh, but I'd say demanding because uh, he tries to get everything out of us that he can, that it possible, and um, you know he knows you know, the guys that he puts out on the field. He knows what we're capable of, and he won't stop until we um, show him what he wants to see. That says it all right there, doesn't it? Miami now probably will just take a knee here with 14 seconds remaining. Kyle Wright will do so. So we're about where we started uh, an hour and a half ago. Both teams. Dead even. Both teams with one loss in the Coastal Division. Both teams dreaming about Jacksonville. But Georgia Tech has overcome that bad start. The 10 to nothing, they were down. Now they go into halftime with some momentum and not Miami. Definitely there's been a momentum shift in the ballgame from Miami over to the homecoming Yellow Jackets. So 13-13 in this battle in Atlanta as we check in now on the field with Bonnie. Such a gutty performance so far by Reggie Ball, Coach, but how do you think that leg injury is affecting him? Well, uh, he can't set his feet like he's used to being able to do, but he's, like you said, he's, he's gutting it out and he's, he's playing. He's making some plays. Miami had the momentum early in this game, but what's your defense been doing to gradually start getting more Kyle Wright and Miami's O-line? Well, we're getting pressure on the passer. That's the biggest thing right now. If we can you know, control the run and get pressure on the passer, we've got a chance to be pretty good. we just got to make some things happen. For Chan Gailey, this would be one of the big feathers in his cap if he can win this homecoming game today. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Georgia Tech hoping for a happy Halloween. It's halftime. College football presented by Best Buy at Georgia Tech. Bobby Dodd Stadium, Grant Field, 13-13. It was a frightful start. We'll say that much. If you want to use the Halloween connotation there, the opening snap, you saw Glenn Cook take in the touchdown. Georgia Tech, though, seem to have settled down. They're not playing great. Neither is Miami, but they're playing even. Well, both defenses are better than the opposing offenses. Yeah. So it's going to get down to which quarterback can make plays and which quarterback can eliminate mistakes. Miami had a 10-point lead. Paulie, you're right down in the thick of things on the Georgia Tech sideline. Could you feel the momentum shift a little bit? Yeah, you know, you know what's amazing? One play, and they're down 7 nothing. But this Georgia Tech team just absolutely stayed with it. They, they did. Nobody was rattled on the sidelines. The coach didn't get rattled. They just said, hey, just get it back, and they did. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary statistically. Boy, there's a lot of even numbers you're going to see come up here or very close to being even. Maybe the biggest differential is down there on the bottom left. Third down conversions, Miami, Miami only one of seven. Sacks, Miami has been sacked four times and Reggie Ball has been sacked three times. Nobody's doing anything as far as rushing the football. And both these teams have found themselves in third and long all day long so far. Here's the first play of the third quarter. Javaris James, the single setback. And he'll get the call. On the right side. Ooh. Head to head, and he broke a tackle. And he's all the way out to the 40. There's the best run of the day by far. Javaris James. Jamal Lewis met him head on, and he lost that battle, and Javaris won it. That's why. That's why. Watch the blocking over here on the left side. Watch. This is why the Miami coaches are very high on this true freshman. He is a cousin of Edger and James. Doesn't get anybody, didn't get hit by anybody until he gets into the secondary. Roberson, number 34, was the first to touch him. Lewis made the tackle. Roberson's the guy that got run over, not Lewis, as I said earlier. Now 84 yards on eight carries. Here he comes again. And again, he ran into Jamal Lewis and a pickup of about three as we check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Brad Varis, James, last run is exactly what Larry Koch was looking for. Disappointed with the run because it was basically non-existent in the first half. He also talked about how disappointed he was with Miami's offensive line. He came into this game really thinking the line was better equipped to handle Georgia Tech's blitz. Remember last year, Kyle Wright got sacked seven times, but the coaches said, we've faced blitzing a lot this year. We need to be more aggressive and protect our Quarterback. They're doing a good job this time because they're running the ball and he's not taking any hits. Second down and six. Quick drop and a quick throw out to Olsen, the tight end, and he's got a first down. 
And Avery Roberson's a guy that made the tackle on the far side, but Miami moves into Georgia Tech territory at the 45-yard line on their opening march of the third quarter. Brad, if they get Olsen involved in this offense, and Olsen number 82 being the tight end, if they get him active early like they're trying to do now, it's going to open up that whole secondary of Georgia Tech. And right now they're using two tight ends, Zellner and Olsen. And it's Zellner that sets up as the fullback and now shifts over to the left side. On first down, it's Javaris James so far this whole third quarter in the opening minutes. A pickup of about three more. I mentioned earlier, and Bob just mentioned, he's Edgerin's little cousin. They call him Baby Jay. And he already passed Edgerin in the freshman annals as far as yardage. And here's what his cousin did wearing the same number for Miami, 96 to 98, now in Arizona. Cardinal after great seasons with the Indianapolis Colts. That's the big edge. That's the big edge. And the baby Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Javaris Ant is Edgerin's mom. I think I got that right anyway. And here he comes again, and he's got another first down, or very close, but a flag flies in. It might be a holding call out here on the corner. Let me tell you one thing about this young man, James, just from being this close and watching him run. Don't try to tackle him with your arms, because you're not going to. They just tried to. They went for his feet. They were gone. His feet were gone. This you one's wrap him up. So I'm this, sorry. this one's coming back. Lock it back. Gets the offense. Ten yards from spot the foul. Repeat second down. I was talking to Edgar and James a couple weeks ago about his little cousin, and he said, I will be disappointed if Javaris doesn't finish his career at Miami as the best running back in history. He said, he used to trail me. I, he was the team mascot when I played Pop Warner, said he would mirror everything I would do because they grew up just a few blocks apart in Immokalee, Florida. With that spot foul, the penalty takes it back to second down and 16 at the 49. Play action for Kyle Wright, has time and throws in the direction of Leggett, and Leggett gets tangled up with Kenny Scott incomplete. It's the little things, Brad. It's the little things. They had a nice drive going, and before this last play, when, when Leggett got called for a push in the back, James ran the ball for a gain of six or seven yards. It was going to be second and three. Now you take away that seven-yard gain, and you add on 10 yards of penalty. Right. That's a 17-yard loss. Miami had 10 offensive penalties last week, and they're the most penalized team in the nation, save for three other teams. 15 total penalties for 120 yards last week. You just can't do it. Third and 16, screen pass to James. He lost the handle and then covered it back up. And now Miami, after having, as Bob said, everything going right, here they are, they're going to punt, and the field position just went away too. Brad, and let me tell you something. This screen was set up so beautifully. It was for for Javaris James. He just let K. Michael Hall go by him. It was set up absolutely perfect. They had three offensive linemen in front, and he never caught the ball. Brian Monroe to punt his last two punts, 22 and 25 yards. They've really gotten some pressure up the middle. They almost blocked his last kick. And now they rough him. Well, they got him that time. Georgia Tech on the return that won't matter. Coming back the other way. It's a good looking return by Tyler Evans. But they got to Brian Monroe, and this will be a first down. It's a roughing the kicker penalty. And boy, what a big mistake by Georgia Tech special teams. Xavier McGuire figures it'd be a McGuire that'd do it. Well, he's, he, he doesn't know how to spell it. That's the problem. It's him. He spells it MC, and he's doing it wrong. And that's why you run into a punter who used to be. Isn't it? But you know what? This is one of those, and I love Greasy's attitude about this. This is one of those real dumb penalties. <laughs> this is a dummy. There aren't many smart ones, are no, there? This, no, this, you have no, you can't get to the ball anyway, and there's no reason to hit this well, guy. I'll tell you, that's just, that's a turnover. And that's what Chan Gailey is saying. He knows that previously when we put pressure on him, that's where we got good field position, and that was what Brad was just saying. But you don't want to, it's a turnover. We give the ball back to Miami. And they have it at the Georgia Tech 36 yard line. Now it's back to James. And James dragging tacklers down to the 30 yard line. He picked up six more. Back to what they were doing when they came out in the second half. Navarre's James had a huge game against Houston. He had 148 yards 
on 18 carries. He's heading for the century mark the way he's playing in this third quarter. That's for sure. Well, he rem and he reminds you of Edgerin because he waits. He's very patient. He's only a freshman, but and he's very patient with what he does. He waits for those holes to open. He's got 34 yards just on this drive alone. Second down at four. Right quick throw, slant to Leggett, breaking tackles, the ball comes out. Now who's got it? Let's see. Georgia Tech's got it. Avery Roberson. Blitz, single coverage, nice throw and catch. It's sort of like Leggett could never quite find the handle, Bob. Well, in a period of about a minute and a half and about four plays, Lance Leggett has made two critical bum plays. One now he fumbles it, and before he had the penalty, setting the, the uh, Hurricanes back. That's just that's just good play by Roberson. Roberson's had a sack, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery. He's playing very well. Quick throw, Reggie Ball to Calvin Johnson, broke one tackle. And out across the 20, might have a first down. Looks like he's right at the first down marker. Well, the NBA season tips off Wednesday night. Two games on ESPN at 8 Eastern. It'll be the Wizards going to Cleveland to take on LeBron and the Cavaliers. Then at 10.30 Eastern, Elton Brand and the Clippers take on Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns. NBA opening week. It's game time on ESPN Wednesday. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern with the Kia NBA shoot-around. Flag on the last play. It's against Georgia Tech. In eligible receiver, number 68 of the offense. Five yards from previous spot, repeat first down. Must have been a lineman uncovered, and that was Mansfield Rotto as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Brad, as you may know, there's a big festive alfresco gathering in Jacksonville today between Georgia and Florida. Gators having all the fun. Craig Lumpkin fumbles it. Ray McDonald scoops and scores three Georgia turnovers have led to 21 Florida points, and that is the margin. Looks like the folks from Georgia aren't partying enough. Look at this formation. Now they're, now they're moving around. And now they're deep in their own territory with a penalty. First and 15. Toss. Deshard Choice will go down at the line of scrimmage. Rodka Atkins made the stop. Calvin Johnson, really the first half, it was just one play that uh, he was successful on. That one he was open. That one he caught and threw a great stiff arm and went 43 yards. They're trying to get it in his direction. That was too high. That was too high and that was too short. It's like Reggie Ball is looking like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears looking for just right, you know. <laughs> Second down to 16. Stop in the hole by choice. He almost snapped through there. Got five yards. Atkins makes another tackle. Atkins has been very active on that defensive line spot. The senior out of Sarasota, Florida, where his daddy's the mayor. And his little brother playing at Florida State. You know, Bob's talking about the mistakes that, that Miami made. Here you are. You got Georgia Tech first down. They gain eight yards with the pass to Calvin Johnson. But there's a legal man downfield. Now they're back. They're third and long again. Well, I wanted to save you from saying Thank third you. and long. You've been saying it all day. <laughs> now it's timeout. Reggie Ball takes a timeout with a big third and 12 upcoming for Georgia Tech deep in their own territory when we come back. Today I will earn rewards points in more ways than ever before. And I will do it while Victor tries to distract me. First, I get points for using my Citibank debit card. Next, I get points for my city mortgage. Now my greatest secret, points for using my city premier pass credit card. Istanbul, please. No madness can stop cities many rewarding ways. Victor, pull yourself together. Rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. This is not what smart travelers do. But this is, go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates. Guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. You, uh, you need some help? Yeah. Could you give me a jump? Sure. Give it a try. Uh, try giving it some gas.
Thanks. Here's how it works. Get the nation's slimmest smartphone at a very slim price. The Q. With easy access to email and Windows Mobile, it's the stylish way to work. Exclusively from Verizon Wireless, America's most reliable wireless broadband network. Verizon Wireless, it's the network. Oh. This is not what smart travelers oh. do. <laughs> but this is. Go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates. Guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. It's a Final Four showdown. Dancing with the Stars, live ABC Tuesday. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. And our college football on ABC brought to you by Best Buy today. It is 13-13 with 9.25 remaining in the third quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein from Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, where I have said seven times today, Georgia Tech third and ten or longer. Third down and 12. Reggie Ball rolling back to the left in his own end zone. Ball is out. Fumble. Still no word from the officials who's got it. Apparently, Georgia Tech got back on top of it. Brad, Boy, he that's just a reached dangerous out. play there. He just reached out and set the ball over the goal line. He, you know, thought he, I don't know whether he thought he was down or not, but watch what Reggie Ball Fourth does. Down. Once he's hit here, watch him reach the ball. He reaches that and lets, lays it on the ground. Lays it on the ground. I think it was Tuminello, his center, number 60, what? who's going to cover he, it. He lays it on the ground. I mean, what are you thinking about? Well, I guess he was thinking he didn't want to get a safety, and at least he gave his punter a chance deep in his own end zone to punt it away, and he got a nice one. Rashawn Jones has to go over his shoulder at the 35. And Georgia Tech gets down there in coverage. That was Give huge. Durant Brooks a round of applause if you're a Georgia Tech fan. He just kicked a 63-yard punt with not the normal amount of space in his end zone to get it out of there. You're watching ESPN on ABC. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by the all-new 2007 Wrangler Unlimited, a new species from Jeep, Aflac, ask about it at work, and Verizon Wireless. Homecoming here at Georgia Tech, the Ramblin' Wreck Parade. The theme this year was the 1940s. Those floats aren't floats, they're wrecks. It's fun to watch, though. Kyle Wright going deep on first down. Leggett didn't put his hands out. He was in mid-stride. Could have been a touchdown, it looked like. Here's the quarterback numbers for the first half. Reggie's only 3 of 16, but he's got that one big, long pass that he hit for the touchdown. Kyle Wright with the interception. Kyle's been sacked four times, and Reggie's been sacked three. Talk about an out of whack stat in the first half. Reggie, 34 yards per completion. You don't see that very often. Well, that's that one big long throw. Yeah. Well, two. One to Calvin Johnson, one to James Johnson. Yeah. Only well, completed three passes. Well, that's it. Here's Javaris James. Flags down. Again, we may have a holding as it's thrown right in the middle of the pile. James got close to five more, which would have put him over 100, but this one's coming back. And the holding call will negate that five yard gain. Let's check in with Bonnie. Lance Leggett was the one who went incomplete on that last pass by Wright. So we know he's OK. Not as bad as it looked after that fumble. I just wonder, Bob, on the last play, we touched on it before we went to the quarterback comparison. That was a pretty well thrown ball. And for some reason, I guess you can get caught in mid stride where you can't get your arms out. It didn't look like Leggett made a play for the football. I know he did. I, you know. Bob, I thought that Leggett would at least dive for the ball because he was that close. That ball, that, you're right, Brad, that ball was catchable. Sure seemed like it. Leggett's out, and Ryan Hill is in. Kyle right in the shotgun. 
Here comes K. Michael Hall on the blitz. Screen pass is thrown in that direction, and it might be something big for Miami. And Javaris James, while he's pointing out his blockers in front, is tracked down and tripped down by Joe Anoa'i, the defensive tackler. That might have been a huge gainer. Got caught from behind. Their blitz from that side. Nice patience by Kyle Wright. Here comes a blitz from over here. He just says, all right, keep coming, keep coming. I'm going to screen to my back. And a nice throw. Roberson, 34, went for the interception and not the tackle. You know, if Joe Anoa'i doesn't stay on that play, I think he might be gone. As it is, he's out to the 50 in a 22-yard pickup. Now James, the runner, and he's got a nice hole off the left side again. At the 43-yard line. I just want to go back a couple of plays. This is the long ball from Kyle Wright. Lance Leggett is out there. Has Kenny Scott beat? And look at the end. I mean, it, that it, ball is a yard away from I, why he didn't at least dive at the ball. I, I don't understand know. that. I mean, he's strange he, looking play. And now that I've seen it again, I think the same thing. Or they or say, more. don't put your arms out too soon. Right. But he ran all the way to the ball, and he could have dove for the ball. It's, it seemed like he didn't want to dive for the ball to make a catch. James, who's over 100 yards, going to lose one here. 14 carries for 104 yards, so he's over the century mark again is Javaris James. But you know, that time he loses one. Very pressed, impressed with Javaris James. Yep. In fact, I'm impressed with all three of these true freshmen that are starting on the offense for the Miami Hurricanes. The running back, James, the wide receiver, Sam Shields, and the right tackle, Jason Fox. Three outstanding guys who are going to be in this program for a long time. Here's another big third down. This one's a little shorter for Miami. Third and four. Got everybody bunched on the left side. And now there's motion on the right side. And maybe you said something about Jason Fox prematurely, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Ball start. 64 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Well, the freshman got a little over-anxious on the right side. Let's take a look at what James has done today with the rushing chart. Big over here on the left side. He's really done well. And the last couple of runs we've had with him, he's done well on the left side. But Brad, getting back offensively, it's tough enough when you go against a good defense that you don't stop yourself. But when you stop yourself with these little penalties, a holding, a false start, uh, pushing the back. And then a third and four becomes third and nine. Now the crowd getting into it for the Georgia Tech defense. Here comes the blitz. Wright stands in. Leggett doesn't make the catch, but a flag flies in. It'll probably be on Avery Roberson. He was the guy covering. They have run that deep dig in route yeah. uh, several times today. You know what's amazing is that there, there were at least four Pass yellow there, shirts. Number two of the defense. Ball be placed final foul. First down. So it wasn't Roberson. They call it on Kenny Scott. And he's got his hands out. That old who me? Yeah, you. Bottom of the screen. He's just going to go down and run a square in. First and There's the play right there on number well, two. Well, what, he's what he did. Him. Go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. He's just grabbing him, Bob, as he's making the turn. And he's already beaten, so he's behind him, and he reaches out. But he's got to let him go. He had enough people on the inside to cover. Well, the ball was in the air, and he hit him. That was that was the foul. James, nowhere to hide this time. Adam Oliver, the defensive end, makes the stop a loss of two. This game in this quarter is like two teams who are playing for the Coastal Division crown, and it's like, I don't know, let's see if we can do something stupid to throw it away. <laughs> I don't want it. You want it? No, yeah, I don't want, want it. You want it? You'll take it. I don't want it. You know, like I said at the halftime, the defenses are better than the offenses, and it's going to come down to which quarterback can make a play and which one can avoid making a mistake. Second down at 12 at the 42 now. Right under center this time. Lost the ball, and he got back on top of it, and he's covered by Philip Wheeler. And Wheeler now holding on to his hand after trying to recover that loose ball. Tonight, pretty good game coming up on ESPN. If you're an SEC football fan, it's always fun to watch Tennessee and South Carolina. The old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, has got them playing pretty well. Bill Fulmer's got a very tough team in Tennessee. 7.45 Eastern tonight.
Games on ESPN and ESPN2 are also available in high definition. The old, the old ball coach went over there last year to uh, Tennessee and beat them. That's right, they did. 4.54 in the clock running here. Another third and long and a timeout call by Kyle Wright just before the snap with 4.45 remaining in the third quarter. Miami takes a timeout with a big play upcoming. They didn't want to spoil a chance, did Larry Coker's team, as they've had it on this end of the field for Georgia Tech for much of this third quarter, courtesy of Javaris James, their freshman running back, who's had a 100-yard day. But the penalties on both teams today are kind of self-destructing how this football game could go. And so with the Coastal Division lead on the line and maybe a date down the line in Jacksonville for the ACC title, that's what's at stake here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Grant Field today. If you're just joining us, welcome to Atlanta. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Bernstein with 4.45 remaining in the third quarter. The key plays in this game. First offensive snap of the ball game. Reggie Ball fumbles. Glenn Cook takes it in for a touchdown for Miami. So they had the early lead in the opening 20 seconds of the ball game. But then Reggie Ball going deep for the other Johnson. James Johnson, 46-yard touchdown. Georgia Tech was right back in the ball game. We've had some field goals wrapped around there by Travis Bell and John Petty, and we're dead even right now. 13-13 with 4.45 to go in the third. And I would just say for you, Brad, right now, to everybody that's watching us now from the other game, is the fact that you have said so many times it's third and 13. Uh, well, I've said it. <laughs> I've said it a lot. And if you're just... If you're just joining us now, Paul McGuire is on our cart camera today. And it's given us a lot more space, Bob and I, up in the booth. Which, which... And it's been wonderful being away from you guys. I've never enjoyed <laughs> anything more in my entire life. It is great down here. Miami is only one out of eight on their third down conversions today. Third and 12. Blitz coming from both sides. Right throws complete. And it looks like a first down. Rashawn Jones. And Kyle Wright threw a perfect pass there. Boy, he threw the ball where he had to throw it. And Rashad Jones, who is a defensive back, who just came over to the offense uh, a few months ago, did the right thing. He came back, he went down, and he caught the football. And he took a hit. That's the way you got to do it. And that went just over the outstretched fingertips of Gary Guyton, the outside linebacker who was in coverage back there. So it was a perfect throw. At the 29, first down for the Canes. Now it's Javaris James going wide again, as he's done many times today. And he picks up about two here. It'll bring up second down and eight after we get an update from Matt in New York on the USC game. Well, Brad, a lot of folks wondered if the Trojans' shaky play of late could catch up to them. It may be catching up to them in Corvallis. Three turnovers and two opening drives to start halves for Oregon State. Matt Moore to Joe Newton there, and the lead is 13 for the Beavers in the third quarter. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, whoa, think, whoa, whoa. I think something's going to happen out there. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Second down and eight, ninth play of the drive. Tyrone Moss now in at the tailback spot. And he'll get the call. And he brings a little more poundage to the table, and he's taking Georgia Tech tacklers with him down to the 18 yard line and it looks like another first down this is an outstanding run by Moss I mean it, it's all his feet because the blocking wasn't really there watch this Moss inside back outside outside's covered a little bit let me go back a little bit now I'll just take on the defensive back Lewis and get the first down I mean that was just an outstanding run it was about a year ago right now this point in the season when Tyrone Moss hurt his knee against Virginia Tech he still led the ACC in touchdowns rushing last year, even though only played seven or eight games. Kyle Wright going for Olsen and almost picked off by Roberson. And that time, a little bit of an overthrow. There's a flag in the backfield, and it's going to be a personal foul on Georgia Tech. Might be roughing the passer. So again, just when Georgia Tech thinks they're slowing Miami down, another penalty. You know, most penalties, as you said, Brad, are dumb. Bob, have you ever seen a game with this many dumbness? Personal foul, <laughs> roughing the passer, 96 of the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Joe Anoa'i, the defensive tackle. He'll come right up through the middle. You see Big Joe, number 96. Yep, that's late. Oh, no. You don't think so? No, no, that's a foul no. for sure. We hit him in the throat. No, no, don't do that, Joe. 
First and goal Miami now at the Georgia Tech nine trying to take the lead again. They've had the lead or been tied. Georgia Tech has never led. Flags fly. As Tyrone Moss was heading toward the end zone. Before the snap, ball starts. 71 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Derek Morse, the right guard with a false start. Let's see if we can get everyone on the offense to have a penalty. <laughs> Everybody wants, here in the second half. You know, maybe they'll show that on the thrifty postgame report. <laughs> John Craig and Doug will have all the penalties from all day long later, time permitting. These two teams, as I said in the first half, are the most penalized team in this conference. You know, Grace, I'll tell you, those, those flags were all orange at the beginning of the game. Now they're all dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of them are dirty. Moss in the backfield gets the call up the middle. He's tripped up. Michael Johnson is the first guy to hit in the big defensive end who Georgia Tech is so high on a sophomore 6'7", 250. I mean, he hasn't even started eating much around here yet. <laughs> this guy might be he something looks, else. He looks like a basketball player yeah, in does. football gear. They are really looking forward to his development over the next couple of years. In fact, on that 60 two yard punt Georgia Tech had he's the guy that made the tackle on the punt coverage. He's on the punt coverage a defensive end on the punt coverage. Second down and goal. Both tight ends on the left. One of them gets the grab at Zellner and he's down to about the eight. He and Olsen both lined up on that side and that's where Kyle Wright was heading. And he wanted to go to Olsen over the middle. But the coverage was there, and he came off, gave it to Zellner. Now it's third and goal. Do you look for the tight end again, or do you try to find a fade to leg it? No, Brad, it's third and nine. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I, I, sorry, I just had to say it. Somebody's got to do some research for us. <laughs> see if there's ever been more third and nines or more ever in the football game in history. Here's Olsen. Olsen's in the slot on the right, and a timeout taken by Miami. They're down to one timeout. Kyle Wright's not a happy quarterback. Big play for the Canes when we come back. The world's first four-door, five-passenger Wrangler. Wrangler Unlimited. A new species from Jeep. Here we go! Hey, Whew. yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Oh, when I'm hurt and miss work? Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yeah. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> Have to try. Friday nights with my best friends. We just have one rule. Everyone orders something different. Try Olive Garden's new chicken Roma layered with Italian cheeses and fresh Roma tomatoes. Or try our new Asiago chicken at Olive Garden. When you want to get away. Let's go, girls. Enterprise Rent-A-Car will pick you up free. And get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. On Wisteria Lane, everything's coming down, coming off, and hold your breath for what's coming next. An all-new Desperate Housewives, Sunday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. You're watching ESPN on ABC. A huge third down for Miami. Third and goal at the Georgia Tech nine-yard line. Trying to regain the lead. Tied at 13. 
here in Atlanta. Powell right in the shotgun. Looks for Olsen now flushed out of the pocket. Still looking. Throws on the run and it's almost intercepted by Kenny Scott. Well, Kyle know. Wright did everything he could do. He stayed in the pocket as long as he could. He got outside. He scrambled. Somebody's got to get open so he can make a play. Nobody gets open. Oliver comes up the middle. He flushes out. Now somebody get open. Nobody got open. So that brings on John Petty again, and he'll try a field goal, which should be a chip shot for him of 25 yards. Two for two today. Kick on the way, and it's good again. John Petty, three for three in Miami. Takes the lead back over from Georgia Tech on a 25-yard field goal. Miami has dominated the third quarter. I guess. Running 22 <laughs> plays to three for Georgia Tech. Three plays in what is almost a quarter that's only got a minute and 28 seconds left. Let's check in on New York. Hi, right, Fred. It's another update from Corvallis and more bad news for USC. Sammy Strotter, 70-yard punt return, and they are so not catching him. His third of the season to lead the nation. The Beavers are rolling up 30 to 10. Obviously, huge implications for the Ohio State Michigan loser. Michigan won today, and the Buckeyes are rolling 37 up. Here a battle in the ACC. Both these teams have dreams of Jacksonville. As you see, the Atlanta skyline as the backdrop to Bobby Dodge Stadium. And uh, kind of a strange game. Between the two teams, we have had 17 times that the teams have been in third down and eight or longer. Don't tell me that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're cringing <laughs> you're gonna, over here. You're going to ruin my day. <laughs> oh, I, that was that's just the worst. I mean, give me third and four. I can run. I can pass. I can do anything I want. I can throw to my back. Don't give me those third and longs. Jamal Evans waiting on the goal line. The crowd trying to revamp the Yellow Jackets here, who are down again now by a field goal. This kick much shorter. It's going to be taken by one of the up men at about the 16-yard line. And out to the 26 is about where Georgia Tech's Michael Matthews will get it. Matthews, a tight end. And now Reggie Ball in the Georgia Tech offense. Where will number 21 be involved in this? Calvin Johnson, one big catch today. They've thrown his way on seven occasions. Did draw a pass interference. He also threw a pass on a double pass back to Reggie Ball. It's Calvin in the bottom of your screen on first down. And the throw is out to Calvin Johnson. And he drags a couple of defensive backs out of bounds right in front of Paul McGuire. Brent, you know, you talk about Calvin Johnson, how fast he is and how tall he is and how much he weighs and with great hands. That time, right after he caught the ball, he knew he was going to get hit. He unloaded. And I mean he unloaded. I'm standing right here. You're just waiting for him. The defensive back is going, oh, no. He's 6'5 and weighs 235 pounds. And he runs about a 4'3540. And his vertical jump is 45 inches. And his teammates say, that's all the higher the device went. He could have jumped another five inches. It just didn't go that high. Here's a little bootleg, and the fullback gets some sugar. Michael Cox rolling out of bounds. Brian Pata. Makes the catch and a 15-yard pickup. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, you might be wondering why Calvin Johnson hasn't seen a lot of action today. And in talking to Randy Shannon, Miami's defensive coordinator, of course they're concerned about him. He's one of the best receivers in the nation. But their top priority was going after Reggie Ball. And, of course, Reggie's playing hurt. But they said, think about it. If you harass Reggie Ball, if you get him out of rhythm, Calvin Johnson is really just another guy. Well, he's got back-to-back -back completions, Reggie does now. And on play action, he's looking for three in a row. And he's got three in a row. James Johnson looks like he might have a first down. Kenny Phillips made the tackle. Georgia Tech's got something working. And that's the thing with Reggie Ball. Bonnie kind of touched on it. He gets in rhythm. Yeah. He can get hot. He can get hot. He, is, he can be very consistent or very inconsistent. Little fake. Good protection. Good, good, good view to throw through there. And sticks it in between two, two defenders. At the 40-yard line, first down for the Yellow Jackets. First, first down since the final minute of the first half. 
Now on a bootleg. Getting chased. Throws on the run. That was a dangerous one intended for James Johnson again. And LaVon Ponder is the guy that broke it up. Well, there's, here's a pass that should have never been thrown. And, and he is very, very lucky that this ball was not intercepted. And I'm right down here where they're throwing. I, I mean, he, he could have completed it to me. I'm a little <laughs> high, but, you know, I'm out of bounds, but it wouldn't matter. But that one there, you just don't throw. You throw it away. He thought he didn't have much time. Barack Atkins had actually fallen down. I think Reggie could have set it his feet. And, you know, he maybe would have run on that play if he was 100% healthy. Now he's rolling right again and throwing a desperation pass. Calvin Johnson caught it. Desperation answered. I thought he was throwing it out of bounds. Single coverage again. Man to man on the outside. Right here. He's just going to go down and come back. The thing that Reggie does here is he gets outside the pocket to give him a little bit more time from the rush. That's Brandon wow. Merriweather, number 19, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Calvin's numbers are improving as the game goes along. And the third quarter comes to a close. I would bet Georgia Tech would love to just keep on playing right now instead of taking a break. But we'll take a break and see if they stay as hot as they've been. 15 minutes left in Atlanta to see who's going to take control of the Coastal Division in the ACC. I don't think you're going to want to go away. Trying to stay away from the guy on the cart cam, Paul <laughs> McGuire. We found another spot for him. Hey, these people are cheering for me, pal. You don't think they're cheering for Georgia Tech? You're crazy. Way to go, fans. First play of the fourth quarter for Georgia Tech as they put three good plays in a row together to end the third quarter. Let's see what they do to start the fourth at the 29-yard line. It's an end around. Calvin Johnson, three Hurricanes are right there with him. He broke one tackle and then slides down. Actually got... About a two-yard loss out of that. So we welcome you back up to the booth and the sanity of our broadcast team. Brad Nussler and Bob Greasy. We're going to call this the third and long bowl, I think, before it's all over. The whole third quarter, basically, Miami had the football. And that was good for Miami. Coming out the second half, they must have had some good runs. I'm sure that uh, Georgia Tech had some good defensively thing ideas, but Miami dominated uh, the, the third quarter. Unfortunately, they also did it in uh, penalties. And they only got three points out of it. Now Georgia Tech trying to get the lead back. Reggie Ball going deep. And it's intercepted. Nope. He dropped it. Brandon Merriweather had it and dropped it. It was intended for Calvin Johnson. Well, Merriweather's Brandon. looking at the sideline as if to say, I had it, coach. Yeah, he's thinking, well, I, you know, I caught the ball, and I'm in the end zone, and I had possession. But stop. apparently the officials don't think so. Stop and go. You gotta have the, you gotta have possession of that ball when you hit the ground, and he didn't have it. Merriweather is talking to uh, Larry Coker, probably saying him to coach challenge. The challenge. I don't know. I think he had it. He had two feet, two Our feet down. inbounds, and he had possession. Look at here. Georgia Tech just wants to snap the football right. He here. had possession of the ball. And Georgia Tech does snap it. Reggie Ball on a run up the middle, first time today. Reggie Ball on the carry. And we go back to I know something that. Patrick Nix told Bonnie and Paul and Bob and I, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, he said, you know, his legs aren't 100%. We'd just as soon not run him. But if it comes down to crunch time in this game, unless he's got a bone sticking out of that skin someplace, we're going to run him. Well, Allison George, the SID at, at, at Georgia Tech, the first thing she said about Reggie is, he's nothing if he's not tough. And this guy is a tough cookie. Yes, he is. Travis Bell will try a 39-yard field goal. High snap. Bell got into it. Did he ring the bell? Yes, he did. A minute into the fourth quarter, we're tied again. Well, a kicker that's been inconsistent is not inconsistent on homecoming. Maybe he's got a date tonight. I don't know. 16-16.
Who wants it? The Heisman. Brought to you by the Nissan Titan. Excuse me. So what exactly are you guys? Sneakers, baby. Vintage 1985 high tops. Limited edition. Old school. Wow. You guys sound pretty cool. You know how I roll. So how's the postal carrier going to handle all you guys? It's all good. The lady drives a big truck. Wow. With lots of room in the truck, the post office comes to you with free package pickup. Oh, that's funny. The water doesn't work. Neither does the ice dispenser. Point taken. Need a new appliance? The Home Depot can help. Get the latest innovations from brands like LG, Maytag, and GE. And right now, get up to a $200 Home Depot gift card by mail-in rebate with your LG appliance purchase. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. That rumble in the distance? It's the next big idea. Will you be ready for it? Hitting the heartland to save their farm. All new Extreme Makeover Home Edition, ABC Sunday. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Not, right now we got a ball game. So, we need to talk about... Okay, we'll tell... 14.02 remaining. The kickoff is going down to the five to Bruce Johnson. Johnson going the other way. Georgia Tech having trouble finding a handle on him. And finally they bring him down at about the 22-yard line. Here's the official that's going to make this call. Let's go back to that interception or non-interception on the last Georgia Tech play. Brandon Merriweather looks to have possession and both feet down in the end zone. And then Larry Coker on the sideline saying he caught it, he caught it. Well, the ball did come out once, once he hit the ground, but... But there's another angle that shows that he clearly catches it and has both feet in bounds. And then, of course, the conversation becomes, why didn't the replay officials here shut down the game at that point and look at it? Or... Why didn't Larry Coker throw his challenge flag and say, we better take a look at it? Because it cost Miami three points. Georgia Tech kicked a field goal after this. Okay, he's got possession. The ball's not moving. He's got two feet in bounds. That's all it takes. They're going to be talking about that one in South Florida for a long well, time, especially if they lose this game. I think the reason Larry did not use his timeout, because if he, if he lost the challenge, then you lose the timeout. If you win the challenge, then you get your timeout back. And they only have one timeout remaining. But still, if that's the play that makes a difference in the game, they'll be talking about it for a while. James on the carry. Jamar's James, who looked very good today, is out to the 29-yard line. Well, the, Brad, other, the other thing is the, the replay official, one more point on this and we'll leave it. The replay official should have shut it down, told the referee on the field, I want to take some time and look at this a little bit more. And then we'll resume the game. Because it wasn't in the middle of the field. It was a play in the end zone where it was going to decide possession or not possession. Bob, the, the one thing that you did, you circled where the official was. He was behind the play. He could never see if they caught the ball or not. That's a good That's point. That's what the problem was to me. I mean, how can he make that call if he can't see it? Good and point. He, got, he didn't get any help from anybody else. Miami with a third down and three. The blitz coming from Georgia Tech. The throw is complete. And it's Sam Shields who hadn't caught a ball this half, but he has now. He's got a first down at the 35. Six-yard pickup, and Miami will move the chains. Under 12 minutes. Miami only has one timeout remaining. First and 10, Miami from the 35. Sam Shields has been a big part of this Miami offense the last two games. He's caught 12 passes and two touchdowns in last week's game. Let's see if they go back to James on the ground now on first down. Wright will come up throwing. 
completes it out to Greg Olson, the tight end, and he's got eight or nine more yards. You know, Brett, being down here, and I've been down here all day on this cart cam, I was I got down here to find out what, why, why did Calvin Johnson last week didn't catch a pass. Now, that really bothered me, so I got down here to try to find out. Well, they didn't throw it to him enough. That, that was the real, that's the problem I found out. But he said he was in good shape today. But this view from down here is unbelievable. I could see everything better than you, Greasy. Well, we'll get you a season pass. There you go. Put him <laughs> no, on the cart won't. permanently. <laughs> yeah. No, you won't. <laughs> Wait till next week up in Wisconsin. Play action right in trouble. Trying to scramble out of it now. Georgia Tech trying to track him down, and they do. Philip Wheeler, too much speed out there at that linebacker spot. And that's the fifth sack today of Kyle Wright after suffering seven last year in this game. All right, now we're at your favorite time of the game where it's third down and nine or eight. Mm -hmm. But you take a look at this. That's Guyton coming in. He almost makes the play. But you've got to give Wright some credit here. Kyle gets himself to the outside. He could not run Wheeler to middle linebacker, but at least he got himself out of trouble and got himself in a familiar situation. Third and nine. And here it comes again. <laughs> Neither team is having a glowing day on third down. Right down the middle, broken up. At the last moment, Guyton and Jamal Lewis combined on Greg Olson incomplete. Was it Guyton that knocked it away? It was so close. They were both coming from opposite directions. He almost tucked that pass in there. It was Guyton, number 58. Olsen finds the center. Now watch as, as Guyton comes back and just wow. knocks it away. That's a beautiful play. Monroe gets a kick away. Tyler Evans calls for the kick, fair catch and takes it at the 26-yard line. 16, 16, less than 10 minutes to go to take command of the Coastal of the ACC. Today, I will earn rewards points faster than ever. For speed enhancement, I wear these striped pants. Victor, change into something faster. I'd like two plane tickets to Miami using my City Premier Pass credit card. Since I also have a Citibank checking account, I get more points for paying my bills online. Victor, how do I look fast? Grr, tiger fast. Thanks to City, no one can touch my rewards point skills. Rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. The family member with the most to say will change every month. But with Singular's family talk, it doesn't matter. Get a big bundle of minutes to share, and months when you don't use them all, keep them with rollover. That's the fairest deal in wireless. Add a line for $9.99. Plus, get the new ultra-thin Samsung camera phone for only $29.99. Only from Singular. Raising the bar. Hey, I'm Mark Horowitz. I just got myself a brand new Nissan Sentra. The dealer said I could pretty much live out of this car, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to be a little difficult, because I'm probably going to start to get some funk under here, you know? I'm going to live out of this car for the next seven days. Got a lot of stuff, man. How did I get all this stuff? Stick around. This is going to get interesting. Oh! <laughs> ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by... The Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2006 Heisman. The United States Postal Service, now the post office comes to you with free package pickup. And Citibank, earn rewards points in more ways than ever with Citi. Some of the festivities for homecoming and Halloween just around the corner. Last six drives for the Yellow Jackets, punt, touchdown, punt, field goal, punt, field goal. That would mean the punt's coming up next if it follows suit. <laughs> Nine plays for 51 yards and a field goal on the last possession. Though. Reggie ball, play action, hurried and throws. 
incomplete. Let's check in with Bonnie. Reggie Ball came up gimpy on the last play on that drive before you think he's hurt. Well, if he is, he's either in denial or he's refusing to tell anybody. As he limped off the field, one of the trainers came out to help him. He just waved him off, walked over to the sideline, got on the bike, stayed loose, stretched. There is not one ounce of give up in this kid. No, nope. he started as ACC Rookie of the Year in 03. He's played all the way now and is number three on virtually all the passing categories here at Georgia Tech behind Joe Hamilton and Sean Jones. This is a big game for Reggie and Georgia Tech. Same for Miami. Deshard Choice wanted a big game today. Now he's got a big gainer go. All the way out to the 44-yard line. 18 yards for Deshard. By, uh, Brad, I'm going to tell you something. He, Mike Cox gives him number 40. Watch him slide down the line and then go right up into the hole. Number 40, here's the block at the, at the point of attack. Now look at the hole. There's an excellent block by the guard. Cox gets a block, and then Choice picks up the rest of his first down on his own. Out to the 44. Miami with that great rush defense, third in the country. Reggie Ball, quick throw to Calvin Johnson. And he stretches out in that 6-5 frame and gets about three yards on a short pass play. Matt Weiner's got another update for us on USC Oregon State. Matt, what do you got? Well, Brad, just about everything has gone the Beavers' way today. This, however, did not. Kyle Loomis, the Oregon State punter, couldn't handle the snap. They turn it over on downs, led to a John David Booty touchdown pass that the Trojans have cut into that lead. It's now 16. Ohio State about ready to wrap it up on Minnesota. So the Buckeyes keep rolling along. Reggie Ball on second down, throws wide open. Mike Cox, the fullback. Down the sideline, the big fellas rolling. <laughs> oh boy. You know, Mike used to be about 6'3", but he keeps hitting guys. He's only 6'1 now. 245 pounder. That's his second big catch out of the backfield. Cox, Cox came into the ball game. Here he is over here with only three completions. Nice job. The tight end 48 Matthews went deep. Cox went out into the flat. Reggie got outside and gave him the ball. Career-long catch of 21 yards for Mike. And out to Shard Choice. Shades just inside the 30-yard line. It'll bring up second down and about eight. Mike Cox, see him, see him moving his head around there. He's, he's Paul's unsung hero. You watch this guy. Now, he should have had three passes caught today, but he didn't. He dropped one eight, pass and went a bit, you know, he just down, got a little too anxious. But this guy you said was six foot one. Brad, <laughs> he's six one wide also. <laughs> Up and wide. Boy, he can eat block. I'm telling you. He's the lead man for Tashard Choice. Who says he's my main man? I just watch number 40 and I go where he goes. And he does and cuts back into Shard Choice down inside the 20. And Georgia Tech's got another first down. But Pat Nix, the offensive coordinator, said about Mike Cox, and just one more time, you're going to see him go up in this hole and block. He said he may be the best fullback in the country. And when you see this guy block, look at the, I mean, he just, <laughs> look at the hole. You finally picked a good unsung hero, McGuire. <laughs> Every time you pick one, the guy either gets hurt or he's out of the ball game early. Hey, I'm one out of 12. Leave me alone. <laughs> the big jinx. That's right. It's like Sports Illustrated's cover. <laughs> First down at the 20 for Georgia Tech. Reggie Ball going to the corner. Matthews made the catch at about the four-yard line. First and goal. It's amazing how Reggie Ball can look so bad at times and then look so good at times. He rolls to his left, puts the money, puts the ball right on the money. Matthews, that's he came into the ball game, the tight end, but only having two receptions on the year. First and goal, Georgia Tech at the Miami four. Georgia Tech. Is going to snap the ball with Miami with too many players on the field. Reggie Ball throws it, although maybe they didn't. I don't see a flag, but they had players running off the field. Reggie Ball's going to the referee. Wait a minute. You can't have guys running all over the place. Well, they had 13, Bob. 13 guys we'll, on the field. We'll count the ones that are on the field now. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They got 11 foot players on the field. Yeah, still, they had we two, just, we still don't have guys, a flag down. They had two guys going off the field. You can see one in the upper right-hand side of the screen. 
He's going off, but there's a guy in front of him. They actually had 13 guys on the field. And boy, you should have seen what just happened away from the camera. The official said illegal substitution and pointed at Georgia Tech, and the whole crowd went crazy. Illegal then substitution, number two in the it. defense. Half the distance to the goal, still first down. That's John Beeson, the linebacker who's coming off an injury. And there was some confusion, and there's still confusion for Miami. They're running guys out back and forth. <laughs> Meanwhile, the penalty is taking it down to the two-yard line. First and goal, Georgia Tech. Calvin Johnson saying, nobody's on me. Throw it over here. Tashar Choice, airborne. Didn't get there. Boy, and Miami avoided a major problem right there. Calvin Johnson, for a second, was all by himself. <laughs> he was. One of the corners came off the bench and just stood out there with him. Take a look. <laughs> down the line. Two of Miami's inside linebackers are not playing this game. Romeo Davis, the normal middle linebacker, is out because of knee surgery. And you just mentioned John Beeson, probably their best player on defense, has not played much today. He may be in there for a play or two. Six and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Second down and goal as Johnson trots out as the lone wide out. At the one-yard line, Georgia Tech has never led. Ball to Johnson. They lead now. Touchdown. The defense is refused. Touchdown. Calvin Johnson's ninth touchdown catch of the year. He's just going to release to the outside now. Comes back to the inside. The play fake holds everybody. That's easy money. Travis Bell's extra point is up and good. And for the first time today, Georgia Tech at homecoming leads in the football game. Nine plays, 74 yards. Reggie Ball looked pretty good on that drive. Here's the final capper from a yard. Single coverage. Phillips felt like a man on an island against the 6'5 All-American. 23-16, Georgia Tech in front. 6'18 to go, and it now... In Atlanta, for those of you that have been watching Ohio State and Minnesota, welcome to Bobby Dodd Stadium. Just moments ago, Georgia Tech capped off a 74-yard touchdown drive with Reggie Ball to Calvin Johnson. The hookup for the score, and for the first time today, the home team is in front. The kickoff. This one may go out of bounds and does. That'll give Miami good field position at the 35-yard line. So in a seesaw battle, a game with more third and long situations than you'll probably ever see in your life, with a lot of major penalties at key times, and somehow Georgia Tech is hung in there. This is a battle for the Coastal Division lead in the Atlantic Coast Conference. If Georgia Tech wins this game, they would have to lose two more conference games not to make it to Jacksonville to the ACC Championship tilt. Chan Gailey, their fifth-year coach, this would be a huge win for this program coming off a humbling defeat at Clemson last week. But still, Georgia Tech trying to go to six and two, so is Miami. And the ball game now rests on the shoulders of Kyle Wright, Miami's junior quarterback. First and 10 from the 35. Wright throws out to Shields, and Shields gets out to about the 42-yard line, a pickup of eight. Both quarterbacks have played much better in the second half. Kyle Wright has settled down, has, he's had two or three nice drives down the field, and so has Reggie down. Ball. Reggie Ball looks like a different player here in the second half than the first half. Reggie looking up at that clock with a smile on his face saying, go, clock, go. 5.35, and remember Miami only has one timeout remaining. Second down, and a long two. Javaris James hits the hole, and he's going to be very, very close to a first down. Let's take a look at a Pacific Life game summary. First play of the ball game offensively. Reggie Ball fumbles. Glenn Cook takes it in for a touchdown for Miami. They had a 7-0 lead in the first 20 seconds. But Reggie went long to James Johnson for a touchdown that got him close. We wrapped field goals around by John Petty. 
and Travis Bell and then moments ago the one yard touchdown throw Reggie Ball to his favorite receiver and maybe the best one in college football Calvin Johnson and now with five minutes remaining it's 23 16 Georgia Tech first down for the Canes from their own 45 the quick out and in and out of the hands of Sam Shields and boy you talk about going to a freshman Kyle Wright's getting kind of used to number 83 isn't well, he? you know I think the best player on Miami's offense is number 83 Shields and and the, the running back Javaris James those two young men they've got four of the five offensive linemen are going to be back again next year so the thing they're missing they're missing fifth year seniors leaders in that offensive line they have one Walshwager the center the other four guys are new starters this year and they just don't have the dominance in that offensive line second down and ten play action Kyle Wright pump fakes and hit from behind the ball is up K. Michael Hall's done it for Georgia Tech. Flags are down. If it's against Miami, that's the sixth sack of right today. And here's an all-important call. It's holding against Miami. I was just going to say, Bob, would John Tenuta dial up a blitz right here on second and ten? And there they came. Well, you know, again, you're just sending more people than Miami has to block. There's, There's the hold. holding penalty. It's right up in the middle of the field. And Adam Oliver is the guy that hits the quarterback, number 42, and causes the fumble. And who else is there? The other linebacker, K. Michael Hall, picks it up. Boy, I'll tell you, these guys, does this defense work in unison? They are really good. He won't crack a smile for about four and a half more minutes. But if Georgia <laughs> Tech holds on, he will. There he is. First down, Georgia Tech. They'd like to milk the clock now because Miami can only stop it one more time. Deshard Choice to about the 25. Let's check back in. One more update from New York. All right, Brad, time for a singular ESPN All-America Player of the Week update. Another easy, efficient, and productive day for Troy Smith, who had 226 total yards in the route of Minnesota before stepping out early. One passing touchdown, first rushing touchdown of the game. To vote, text VOTE to 87654 on your singular wireless phone. All right, Matt. Here we've got 416 remaining. Brad, one thing you're talking about, Tenuta, and, the, and the thing about his defense that these guys all love is because every single one of these guys in this team gets an opportunity to blitz from on the defense. All of them. Every corner, safety, everybody. And they bring people in from the locker room. They just let them blitz <laughs> once in a while. Miami, Kareem Brown shaken up and walking off under his own power, but walking very slowly, I might add. Let's take a look at the Best Buy playbook, Bob. All right, Mike Cox, the fullback. We've been talking about him all day. He's right here. His number is 40. Now, he's not an offensive guard, but watch. As this tackle comes across the line of scrimmage, he's going to come and basically do a trap block on the defensive tackle right there now look at the hole and there's his block number 40 a fullback but just as good as an offensive guard he's had a heck of a game as a blocker and a receiver he's in motion right now on second down and seven choice up the middle to short choice is gone touchdown Guess who got the block? Get Mike Cox got a block again. This guy, I'm gonna tell you. That that guy, and that's why Choice just thinks he's the greatest. And he said, you know, when I line up behind him, there's just nothing but open holes. Travis Bell's point after is good. Georgia Tech is three minutes and 49 seconds away from sitting in a driver's seat in their half of the ACC. Here's Cox. He's going to come in and get a block right on the nose tackle. Right here. Look at these two guys block, and the hole is right here. The center and Cox did a little a, a, a pair block 
between the nose tackle and the middle linebacker. As a growing business, you don't always get the attention you really need. That's where the principal can help. From banking to health plans to retirement solutions, we have lots of ways to help a not-so-big business rise above the crowd. The Principal Financial Group. We'll give you an edge. Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses. Wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. It's a textural taste sensation. To get crunchy, chewy, and cheesy, think outside the bun. Look for special savings from Energizer on Cars DVD at participating retailers. Rated G. For some, recovery is a long road. For men, they reach for Revitalizing Lotion Q10. Because Q10 replenishes skin to feel healthy, firm, and fit. Especially when you don't. Nivea for men. More evolved skin care. The building is starting to move right now as the fans are moving here. Can you feel it, Bob? I can feel it's it. It feels like an earthquake <laughs> up here. It's 30 to 16. With 349 remaining and time running out on Miami. They're going to need some points in a hurry. Tashard Choice has maybe just closed the door on the Hurricanes and opened the door for Georgia Tech. To maybe head to an ACC championship down the line. Their remaining schedule doesn't have a lot of great teams. This is a great run back by Bruce Johnson, though. And that sets up Miami with the possibility of getting some points early. Here's Tashard Choice. He wanted to go over 100 yards and score two touchdowns. He's over 100 yards. First time somebody's done that against Miami all year long. And he lit up the end zone and the fans there like he lights up the locker room. Everything I do, I talk a lot. I talk around my teammates a lot. I'm so comfortable around my teammates. That's how we do. You know what I'm saying? You talk to them off the field, be the same way on the field because they trust you. You know, they know I'm going to be there every game. And they just, some of you be with your brotherhood, with your teammates. It's pretty funny. You should see those guys play cards in the locker room. <laughs> that guy's scary. <laughs> He's a lot like Mike Hart is at Michigan. He's one of those kids that lights up the huddle and lights up the room. <laughs> Well, here's, take a look at this. Larry Coker, over the first six years that he's been in Miami, he's up there with some pretty good company. Pete Carroll and Mac Brown, everybody in that, that group has won national championships. But there are some people, Brad, that say that, you know, his job should be on the line. Now, he won his first 24 games, won a national championship, and was runner-up the next year. But it's the but society of what have you done for me lately, he's, obviously. He's been 34 and 11 since that time which is pretty good stuff also back to back nine win seasons they were humiliated by LSU in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl that you and I and Swanee did here's Kyle Wright throwing for Olsen great catch by the tight end he breaks free Olsen's gonna score Miami's right back in business <laughs> 41 yard touchdown and this one's far from over Brad he caught this ball with one hand this is Olsen not only did he catch the ball then he stiffs arms the defender Take a look at him, number 82, he's on the right of your screen. He's going to make this catch with one hand, tucks it in, throws Lewis on the ground, and then scores a touchdown. How good is that? Can't do it much better than that. It's poor tackling by Roberson, for one thing. John Petty, an all-important point after. And it's up. And he tucked it inside the left upright. So Miami, I said, needed points in a hurry because they don't have timeouts or much time left, and they got points in a hurry. Only took them about a minute to go down the field. Greg Olson 
Haven't heard much of him this year. He's been injured, had a concussion, missed the last ball game and a half. Came in with 18 uh, receptions, but no touchdowns on the year. That's his first one this year. So with 2.37 remaining in the ball game, a 55-yard drive capped by the right to Olsen touchdown. And now it's right back to a one-possession football game. Don't forget time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights with John, Craig, and Doug in New York. 2.37 now remaining in that jubilation that was going around Bobby Dodd Stadium that had the whole place moving. Everybody's standing still right now going, uh-oh. Brad, you have no idea, you know, being down here on this cart right behind the Georgia Tech bench, and I, this thing got co so quiet, there is, there's not, the players aren't even talking to each other. They, they don't even want to look at each other. It just scared them to death. <laughs> hey, we got a 14-point lead. We got, what, two, three, two and a half minutes. It's over. It's ours. Wrong. Now they really got to fight again. Remember what Chan Gailey told all of us that he has been preaching to his players? Play 60 minutes. If you don't play 60 minutes, you're going to get beat. And now the kick is coming up, and they will kick away. You only have one timeout. That's why you have to kick it deep. Rashawn Grant inside the 10. Grant the backup running back. He went a pretty nice job weaving through traffic and got out to about the 24-yard line. Sharpton made the tackle on the special teams. So now Miami with only one way to stop it. Georgia Tech is just thinking, let's get some first downs and let's get out of here. This is where the new timing rules helps the offense because the ball on a change of possession starts with the ready for play and not the snap. Our Star Watch, IBM Star Watch guys. Calvin Johnson, a touchdown, an all-important one a few minutes ago. And Tashar Choice, the first guy to go over 100 yards or at the 100-yard mark against the Miami defense all year. And now he'll be called upon, you can bet, on this drive. The officials are calling timeout to set the chains. And they do so at the 24. Reggie Ball still talking to the referee and wondering what's going on. Well, look, as Bob said, the clock did start a change of possession after it was all set. But then the officials stopped the clock again. They put 25 uh, seconds back up on the play clock. Resetting clock to 2 minutes, 24 seconds. So they want nine more seconds back on the game clock is what the problem is. Well, they're giving it to them back on the play clock, though. So, you know, they're really not losing anything. Well, they, the play clock, they are, because the play clock went from 25 to 8. That's 17 seconds. They should have added 17 seconds, and they didn't add that many. Now both are running. Well, 215 left on the game clock, 15 on the play clock, and Reggie Ball will get him up and take his time. Watch out, Phillip. Deshard Choice in the backfield on a first down, Georgia Tech at the 24. And he gets the call. Broke one tackle, battles and battles for a couple tough, hard-earned yards. We're under two minutes. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Hi, Brad. Great finish on ESPN News. North Carolina playing hard despite the announcement this week that John Bunting won't be back. Had a chance to send it to overtime, but Joe Daly is picked in the end zone by John Abate. Wake goes to 7-1. and one. About four and a half minutes left to go in Corvallis. The Beavers still milking that eight-point lead on USC. So Wake Forest, a great season going for them, and they're thinking about the ACC championship, too. Both these teams dreaming about the Coastal Division crowd. Georgia Tech's got the advantage. If they can win this, they'd be in good shape. All they need is a first down. And Tashar Choice almost got him one. Miami's got to take their time out. Down to 112, and they will stop it. Remember this for the Coastal Division lead. Georgia Tech would go to four and one, and they'd be looking pretty good because they beat Virginia Tech in a game that we did for you. Virginia a winner today, but and Georgia Tech's schedule is not real tough from here on out. At NC State, mm -hmm. at North Carolina, right. and Duke at home. Uh -huh. That would put them in the favored role in all those ball games. And they could you lose, look at it as way. you say. You can, they could lose two of those and still win it. There's the remaining schedule. A three-win team, a one-win team, winless Duke, and then Georgia. That doesn't matter for the ACC standings. That matters for bragging rights. And they just have to win one of those three. Right. 
<laughs> okay. Which one do you want to pick? Bob? Well, they would have to lose two not to show up in Jacksonville, is the way I put it. So okay. they they want to they don't right. want to lose any more, obviously. Yeah, exactly. But they could lose one and still go. Yep. Well, you know that you, you just mentioned it just a moment ago, Brad. What rattles through my my brain with, with Chan Gailey saying, "I've told these kids, I've told them, these men, you have to play for 60 minutes." Mm -hmm. And man, they're within a minute and 12 of winning their football game. Right now, they're 72 seconds away from one of the biggest wins yeah. around here in a while. This is the biggest play right here because if if Georgia Tech picks up a first down, the game's over with. They just kneel down. If Miami can stop them, then Georgia Tech is going to have to punt the ball away. And get a load of this, fellas. It is third down, but this is the shortest third down <laughs> of the day. Third down and two for Georgia Tech, that is. They get this in its ball game. Choice. Nope. He's going to lose yardage. So it's fourth down. And the clock running. Georgia Tech missed on its last seven third down conversions. That was the one they wanted the worst right there. But they have a touchdown lead and the clock is in their favor. They can kill 25 seconds so they get down to about under 30 seconds probably mm -hmm. before they have to delay a game or take a timeout. You take they have two timeouts left. You take one. They can get it down to 28 seconds. And that's what Chan Gailey, everybody's clock watching right now. The people in the stands are all standing there looking at the clock. <laughs> you know, the, one, the one thing you do with your punter is you just say to him, you know, don't, don't get him too nervous, but just say to him, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do here is get it off. Right. I don't care what it takes for you. Don't get cute. Just get the ball out of there. Well, this has been a good one. Should be a good one on Monday night on ESPN for you. The AFC East leading New England Patriots head to the Metrodome in Minnesota to take on the Vikings and the Vikings having a good season under their first year head coach. Monday Night Football on ESPN 830 Eastern also available in high definition on ESPN HD and Spanish on ESPN Deportes. Kyle Wright talking things over in hopes of getting his hands on it for a few more seconds. You remember last year? When the University of Miami had a kid named Devin Hester returning yeah. punts. Oh, boy. And, you know, he could have been on this field here. Yep. And he's still doing it pretty instead, well in the NFL. Instead, he's running punts back for touchdowns for the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Miami has blocked one punt this year. And I'm sure Durant Brooks, who I thought had one of the best punts I've ever seen today, out of his own end zone for 63 yards. And exactly what Paul talked about. Catch it. Look it into your hands. Get it on your foot and get it the heck down to the other end of the field somewhere where Rashawn Jones is back waiting. And he got it away and he got a beauty again. Jones dropped the ball. Georgia Tech's got it and they've got the ball game. What a kick. You'll what never a see a happier punter in your life. <laughs> he did all things perfect, Brad. He got the ball in his hands and got it off as quick as he possibly could. And that's all the only thing he thought about. The only thing left now for Georgia Tech is to take a knee. They won't have to. It's over. Now they'll go sing in front of the student section, the Ramblin' Wreck. They'll meet Mama and Daddy in the tunnel, and they'll go to the homecoming dance because they've won their 11th straight homecoming game, and they did it against a good football team. 30-23 is the final. Georgia Tech goes to 6-2. and two. Miami falls to 5-3. and three. Today's Chevrolet players of the game, the two running backs who wanted to have big games and both did. Javaris James, 113 yards to Shard Choice had the winning touchdown that ended this one. A thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund in those gentlemen's name. Let's go down to the field. Here's Bonnie. Reggie went to Shard Choice, scored that final touchdown. You looked at me and you said game over with a huge smile on your face. Tell me about the emotion you have right now. Um, just glad to get out of this stadium. Our own stadium at that with a win. Uh, we had a lot of mistakes. I had a lot of mistakes personally, but uh, the team persevered and we still came out with a victory. 
In the Clemson game, you got hurt pretty early. It may have affected you. What was your mindset going into this one? I'm always hurt. I always banged up, man. I just got to play through it. It's a long season. You know you're going to get bruised a lot. But uh, like I said, you just got to play through it. Everybody's hurt. Reggie, thanks. Brad? There's what they're doing, singing in front of the student section. 30-23, a big, big win for Georgia Tech. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, we'll have live final round coverage of the Chrysler Championship at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC. 30 to 23. For Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Bernstein, I'm Brad Nessler. Don't forget, stick around. We'll have an update on the Oregon State USC game on the post game report in New York with John, Craig, and Doug in a moment.